All right, welcome to to what? Uh, Saigon Sports Dodge number nineteen. This is TK. I'm and joined I'm by. Shoda. I'm Shoda. My co-commentator Shoda coming straight at you from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Hey Shoda, yeah. if I were a global smasher who's stopping by Vietnam and wanted to join the scene, where would I go? Uh, for smash scenes or... In Ho Chi Minh smash scene. Okay, uh, you should stream by beat ups on Volventen Street. And, uh, we have uh, weekdays okay. every Saturday. Oh, every Wednesday. Awesome. And then another friendlies every weekends. Could be Sunday, could be Saturdays. Where can I find information if I wanted to, if I forget everything you just said? Where can I find things like that? Uh, you can find it on Discord. What's, what's our Discord? Discord is a... Uh, Smash Bros. Vietnam. And do we have a Facebook too? Uh, we, I believe we do. We have a Facebook. Is, how, uh, how can we find it? Smash Bro VN. That's right. We so have if, a Facebook group as well. So if you guys, any of you guys watching are from abroad and want to join the cool Vietnam scene we've got here, go to Discord, go to Facebook, see you in tournaments. Yeah? See you in tournaments. So then... We're about to start, but before we start, let's talk a little about Vietnam. You've been living here your whole life, right? Exactly. How do you like it? I love it. Um, I moved to Ho Chi Minh about six years ago. Uh, I've been loving it so far. Uh, everything about it, the people, the street, the food. And what do you like the most about Ho Chi Minh City? Probably the people. The they people are, so are cool. Open, they are so lovely and friendly. By the way, I can't really hear you. Can you turn up your volume so I can hear you as well? This one is my mic. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Can Great. you hear me? Yep. Awesome. So, I am not originally from Vietnam or from Ho Chi Minh City, but I can basically say I agree with Shoda. The people are awesome, the food is awesome, and it's pretty cheap. Oh shit, we're joined by a surprise! Uh, could you introduce yourself a little? My name is Lemon. Came to, came to play today for Merrill. For Merrill? <laughs> The Meryl's last, ah, last ever one. That's right. You reminded us today is a special day because one of the members from our scene is leaving. Paco Raptor. That's she, right. If you've been following our scenes, you should know that she is a wolf man. And she's usually one of the best as well. So we're, we're rooting for her to go deep into tournament. Go get him, Raptor. <laughs> oh, there she is. She's right there. She's going to the Philippines. That's mm. right. Have you ever been to the Philippines? I have not. Have you? I have. And I can say the food in Philippines is pretty good. But man, Vietnamese food, I think is better. All right. So guys, we are about to head into our first uh, game. You need to break it down a little bit. So thank you very much for sticking up Bring with it us, down putting a little up bit. with us. There we go. And uh, nice. to the right a little. Yep, perfect. Liam, could you pull up the bracket on my phone, please? And we are just about to start. It's just a few minutes away. Could I we are still setting up brackets and getting people ready. Could I borrow your phone, please? So I can just see for a while. Thank you. I'll keep good track of it. So, first, we are joined by Marlon and Taz Tato. The Taz? Pastato. Pastato. Potato, potato, pastato, pastato. I'm going to call him Pastato. Let, let, me, let me confirm. Are you guys Marlon and Pastato? 
Uh, which one is it? Ah. Let me edit the name. Grazwazo and Cancer. Cancer. Grazwazo? Okay. And his name. Okay. Floppy! Yeah. Can we use your controller? Grass. Yeah. Yeah. Grass. Yeah. There we go. Nice. Okay, so uh, this is going to be the live previews, and then this is where, what we That's are switching right. to. That's right. Recording. We are indeed recording. We have we try uh, here at Vietnam scene. We try to get everyone on stream, whether you're a very good player or whether you're just new who just wants to try it out. We try to make everyone on the stream to give everyone a chance. I think that's what makes our scene really fun. Don't you think? That's right. So actually, I've never seen these two play, Cancer or uh, Grazwazel. Uh, I believe they are both news at the scenes. Have you ever seen him? I haven't. But I've heard cancer is pretty tough to beat. Really? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, that is true. This is true. So we should root for Grazo then? I don't know, man. Because cancer sometimes... Cancer is hard you to beat. You, you need cancer to eliminate the weak, you know? So, like, true to his name, he's like an unstoppable force. I'm thinking that's what he was going for here. What do you think? So you want Cancer to win? You know what? Why not? I'm gonna put my money on Cancer. Okay. Are you saying Grazwazo? I will say that Grazwazo gonna take Cancer down. Okay, let's let's pray for Grazwazo and pray for Cancer. But you know what? Even though we are rooting for someone, we both have to try our best to be unbiased. That's right. As commentators. Okay. Mm. So even though Cancer is clearly the better name, Grazwazo isn't so bad. It's okay. Maybe 8 out of 10. It depends on the type of Cancer. That's right, he doesn't specify, does he? What type of Cancer would you give an 8 out of 10? Uh, lung Cancer. Because that's where all the blue come from. Blue mess come from. Then, what type of cancer would you not give an 8 out of 10? <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite type of cancer? Let's ask you that. Lung cancer. <laughs> so, the highest cancer can ever score is an 8. Oh, interrupt that thought because we're going into our first. Game. Switch it. It's already switched. Oh, really? Awesome. Alright, so Little Mac versus Kirby. Um, in this matchup, if you are new, like Little Mac is, in my opinion, the noob stomper. What do you think? That's true. So, uh, if, you're, if you're being reckless, you can be punished really hard. So this will show like Stress Wazel's skills. If he's if he knows what he's doing, he should win the Little Mac matchup because he Little Mac has so many weaknesses, right? That's right. But because these are new players, I they don't know. They basically have no air control. At yeah, all. that's right. On the opposite side, Kirby had five jumps. But man, so oh, okay, you see that already. So it looks like. Grozwazo doesn't much have an idea what he's doing. Which is fine. We are so, here having fun. That's right. So Kirby's uh, final cutter, like, he, okay, so Grozwazo's trying to use a lot of his B-moves, which aren't that good, to be honest. Is this a lot of mis is this a pl mistake right? a lot of new players make? Um, like, Kirby's attacks are leaving him pretty open. So, Little Mac, <laughs> with his awesome <laughs> frame data, is just punishing it. If I were Zwazo, I would like do stuff more on the ledge, you know, like throw Little Mac off the stage. What do you think? That's right. You can just suck him up and bring him down. That's right. Yeah. 
Yeah, oh, and I the thought KO so. pen's gonna take it. So I don't think Guazo knows that that move goes through shield. <laughs> you cannot shield it. Can you parry it? Uh, maybe. I oh, don't you know press that down, either. press down. See, see, that's he's listening. He's listening to our commentary. That's right. That's what you're supposed to do against Little Matt. Just get him off the stage and then try to jump him. That's right. That's right. He would, so when Little Mac is charging right there, if Kirby still just inhaled him, inhaled him, and then Little Mac would just go straight into Kirby. There you go, there you go. Oh, and it's down beat. Now it's even. There you go. So now Grigazuazo's learning, like, he knows Little Mac is so good, too good on stage. That's why you gotta, like, just camp the ledge. You gotta just play unlike any other matchup. Oh, oh man. Kirby has to be he's, careful he's taking, around his down yeah, yeah. smash. He's taking a huge risk with that hammer because he's saying like I'm gonna kill you but if I don't you're gonna kill me <laughs> you're gonna get a free smash attack that's right Grass was your if they're hearing suck him up turn around and blow him off the stage oh but oh. I think cancer cancer is right now Oh, and you an hate to see that on stream, SD. yeah. See, this is the beautiful, why Smash is so beautiful, like, Cancer has adapted to that strategy. That's why he's, like, trying to keep center stage and not going, uh, except he did there. You cannot And then, goodbye, down. Cancer! And that's it, if you're off stage as Little Mac, you should that's be right. come back. It's illegal to come back to stage. Grazwazo is learning. And now, now that Cancer is a little afraid to go to that ledge of the stage, now Grazwazo, as you can see, he... Oh! And a fully charged down B is gonna take it. I think... Is Little Mac Cancer or...? Little Mac is Cancer. I think right then, we saw like what Smash is all about. Adjusting to your opponent and then readjusting and readjusting again. Like at first, Grawazo was just getting dominated. Then he's like, I'm gonna camp the ledge. And then he was catching back up. And then Cancer went for the YOLO, like from center stage charge punch. And that's okay. And it pays off? It is. First game going to Cancer. Are we going to see a switch? Or are they sticking with Little Mac and Kirby? I think Cancer would stick to Little Mac. That's right. But if I was Grizzwazo, I don't know. I might. I, if I lost one game, I might try to switch. Oh, he switched up the color. Okay. Color counter pick is a thing. <laughs> and so is music counter pick. They are both going as gray color. All right. Really neutral. Okay. Oh, Grazuazo I see. starting off, flying onto the top. No, you, you see what Grazuazo did. He chose a stage full of platforms so he can take advantage of Little Mac's weak aerial game. And that's smart. And he was trying to camp those platforms, but now he's just getting beat and he's getting impatient. What he should do is to be patient again, use those platforms, make Little Mac try to do jump, and then punish him with where it's landing, just like that. If you suck the opponent and press down on your control stick, you can copy his ability. Yeah, but do you really want Little Mac's ability though? It's what get cancer the first game, so why not? But like, he didn't copy Little Mac's ability. Oh, he didn't, that's he didn't right. didn't press down fast enough. That is the danger of just charging your hammer. So... Oh, you can just wait out for just a little you know bit longer. Like Grazuazo was playing really patient at first, trying to use the platforms. But then, now he's behind, now he's no longer patient, he's just rushing in there. And that's where Little Mac just dominates you, because he has such bad frame data. Like if I were Grazuazo, I would just try to calm down, like take a deep breath, take advantage of Little Mac. Sure you're behind one stock, but that's not behind by a lot. You know, don't go for YOLO hammers. Sure you win, but you might lose the stock. Oh, and Cancer had a KO punch, and he missed it. Yep. This is fair. Uh, okay. 
sick, bro. Wazel's doing fine again. Except for the hammer. See, he gets punished for even pulling out that hammer. Like, he was trying to use the platform, and he was winning. But then he goes for the YOLO hammer. And man, Little Mac is just gonna punish that all day. Oh, oh no. He missed the suck. He, he, yeah. See? He's using laggy moves off platform. Like if he were on the platform, Little Mac can't really punish with his aerials. But when he's on like the floor of the stage, Little Mac is just gonna forward smash you for like 20%. Oh, Razzwazo can totally come back from this. Just go for those YOLO he, he hammer. Can, but he has to play patient. He, can, he has to stop using the hammer, first of all. He has to take advantage of the platforms. He has to move, bait something out from Little Mac and then punish it. Oh! Uh, Good oh, match coming out whenever, from Cancer. Every time he's pulled out the hammer, Little Mac has punished him. This is where Grawazo has to readjust. Oh, there you go. And the YOLO hammer takes it. So that, that's why he pulls it out, because occasionally you'll get a, like a YOLO like move, but I, I don't think it's worth it. It's, it's too risky, especially when you're 1-0 behind. It's, I would I would probably not risk it. Razzo is trying to make something happen here. Yeah, with the he's playing upbeat. smart now. He's playing patient now. Like, oh. oh. But Cancer is coming right at him. Yeah. The jab will not kill. The One fake kill. No, kill. don't land on Little Mac. And GG to Cancer. Who takes first blood? That is 2 0 for the matchup be between Cancer and Razzo. We are now going to wait for the next. I think if Grawazzo were to re like look at his clips he can see all the places he can adjust taking advantage of platforms he already took true, little mac to place with platforms why didn't he take advantage of it right all right what's the next matchup huh what's the next match the next matchup let's find out oh we got sloppy Sloppy on stream. Oh, versus Limon. Senor Limon. Some of my favorite people to analyze. So Sloppy, for some context, for if you're new to our scene, plays Mewtwo, Lucas, and freaking Ridley. Ridley's like his, like, if you don't know the matchup, I'm going to destroy you character. It's his, I think it's his best character, but... He thinks he doesn't think Ridley's his best character. Whereas Limon usually plays Peach. He's been messing around with new characters, but I think I think uh, Limon L I. Limon. L I M O, right? L I M O N. It doesn't matter. Put his name as sloppy ass. Oh, never mind. So Limon usually plays Peach, and really, I have never played with Limon. Actually, now that I think about it, Peach versus Ridley. Yo, we got more people joining us. We got the D and the Hobo. <laughs> they wanna, they wanna make some surprise cameos, but like Peach versus Ridley. Uh, remember, Man. Sloppy doesn't just play Ridley, he has That's the... right, I'm just thinking who Sloppy might pick. It might be Lucas, actually. It might be Lucas. Yeah. Mewtwo, okay. Okay, Mewtwo against Peach. Dang. So Peach combos extremely easily. Peach is gonna, like, take you from 0 to 60 real quick. So I think Sloppy's planning on, like, on uh, his tail being longer than Peach's hitbox. Come on, stop, stop, stop t posing for photo ops. Nice waifu. And help me analyze this freaking matchup. Okay, okay. Like, 
what do you think of the Teach versus Mewtwo patchup? I don't know. Uh, Mewtwo is kind of light, and Teach forward airy. Well, it really hard. You'd think Mewtwo is light, but he's not that light in the grand scheme of things. In fact, I I don't know. Peach might they might be around the same uh, the same way, but Mewtwo has a tail, and that tail is kind of like a sword, except with a hitbox. <laughs> so like, I you can mean a see. Hurt box. Yeah, with a hurtbox. I can see Sloppy trying to like trying to space. Limon Peach. Wait, what? Zero Suit Samus, what is this? Lemondo! Oh, uh, Lemondo! Go, King DDD! You never played Zero Suit either! Oh shit, Diddy Kong! Oh, he does have a Diddy Kong, that's right. Limon was oh, training but up he's gonna but yeah, like I thought. Go with his comfort pick, Peach, here. He's going with Peach. Hmm. From what I know, I think this is a losing matchup for Mewtwo, but it's not that bad. Because Peach just has better frame death. Better punishes. Just because you have better frame data doesn't mean you win. Well, in, in Smash, mostly you do. <laughs> Unless you're like Sheik or something. But like... Hmm. I do think Sloppy is the better player. So we'll see. Yeah, see, like I told you, right now, Sloppy chose Mewtwo to try to wall out Peach. Peach has to get close. But that tail, the shadow ball, the reflect says no, get off of me. You're, 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 you know, you're cute, but I ain't want none of that. I want some of my Poke- Oh! Oh, and it's gonna be it. Yeah, I want some of my Pokemon ladies. I don't need any of you Mushroom Kingdom hoes. <laughs> but once Peach gets in, Peach is the problem. So, cause now they're all tied up. That's right, that's exactly what I was thinking of. So the forward tilt tail is longer than, I think, most of Peach's moves. And it kills. So that's what you saw right there. So Sloppy's playing it, I think, how you should play the matchup. Which is just a space, out space Peach. And he's, he's, he's getting rewarded for it. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's Peach right. Peach takes it. Peach read the ledge option, and when Peach reads you, my good, her punishes are just so evil. Oh, he was so greedy! He charged it up for so long! That's when Sloppy's like, you're not gonna match. <laughs> I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna punish you! You see? Even, even when like Peach is trying to float and throw out her really... Like, Peach's aerials are the best part of her kit. But Mewtwo's forward air comes up faster than Peach's forward air. So that beats it. So I see I see what Sloppy is trying to do here. Like Lemon, his combos haven't been optimized yet. If he was like very easy, he can only yeah. follow up with oh. oh, but he can't reach the ledge. If Limon like would have optimized that combo, yeah, see, like with that neutral air or like a down tilt or something, he should be taking Mewtwo from zero to sixty. But at this rate, Mewtwo's at eight percent, and the more neutral they play, the more Mewtwo's gonna win, just because he's a better, longer reach neutral. Oh, that was so smart. Did you see that? He forced Peach to jump with the Shadow Ball, and then he just punished her. When Peach could have like tried to go for like the Toad Reflex, maybe that's something that... Oh, yeah. So I think one thing Liam, or uh, Mr. Limon Limondo, Limondo as he wants to be known, one thing Limondo could do is like not be scared so much of the walk of the shadow ball because like he can reflect it he can do other things uh, right now Sloppy's forcing Limondo to jump with the shadow ball and then just punishing those area options 
whether it's with an up smash or a forward air, which speeds out Peach's options. You can deflect the shadow box, but That's then you are, you're open for punish. Well, you, but are you really? Because when Toad absorbs that shadow ball, he's gonna, like, uh, his, his counter lasts for so long. So I'm not sure if he's open, like, if he is that open for that punish. And you've made Sloppy waste the shadow ball, so now he has to run away and charge again, giving you stage control. Oh, and Sloppy gonna switch it up, going with his Oh, he heard! He, he's been listening to our anti-Sloppy strategy, so he's like, you know what, fuck no, I'm going to different character, and then Mondo's gonna counterpick the counterpick! Oh, and a pink young Let's like, do it! Okay. Let's... Wait, it's, it's a new set? Huh? Is there a bracket reset? What's going on? Who are these people? So it was... Did you see that? That was interesting because Sloppy picked Lucas first and then Limondo picked Link. And I think this is a horrible matchup for young Link because he's all about projectiles. And this is this is where like Limondo is like, you know what? It's a terrible matchup for me, but I'm a better player than you, so I'm just gonna destroy you. <laughs> The, the balls on this man. Do you see, like, Lucas is like a reflex. He has like a, an absorber thing to absorb projectiles. Oh, he can like headshot exactly. But man, I gotta I gotta commend Limondo because this man is like, matchups don't matter, bro. I'm just gonna kill you. But it, it, it's not working out for him, unfortunately. Mm. Nice string coming out from Lemondo. Yeah. Keep it going. Oh shit, Lemondo. I think oh, that was the buffer who screwed him up. Because usually when you like uh, neutral B and land it, you can follow that up with something. But he rolled. Oh, oh yeah. This is why like Young Link, he needs time to set up. But Lucas isn't going to give you time. And he even wants you to set up. Damn. Like even so when you do so set up, like Lucas, it's just gonna absorb your projectiles. Which is why this is such a hard matchup. And a perfect back air. Was that back air? You know what we called getting three soft? The ole, 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 ole. Three sock, three sock. Ole, 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 ole. Three stock, but I, I respect oh, right. I respect you, Sloppy, for changing it up. And Limondo, I respect you for saying, "Fuck, this is a bad matchup, but I'm gonna destroy you," and then not destroying him. But that was all. It's all about the balls. Sloppy is just reveling in his victory. He's just reimagining images of when he won and then just masturbating to it. <laughs> it feels great, especially that spike. He's coming, so am I. So, Limondo, while we have, let's switch back to the player cam. When we have a. Limondo here, I want to get some opinions. Yeah. The Young Link versus uh, Lucas matchup is pretty bad. Why did you choose that uh, that matchup? Uh, <laughs> basically, I just wanted to mix it up and try and go for the unknown quantity. I don't like playing any of Papi's characters. If you pick Ridley, I would have stayed with Peach and I like that matchup a lot. Um, but Lucas, I don't know. I find him tricky. We play it sometimes and... I know it's close, so I wanted to go for a character where I had not played him as much. Try and go unknown quantity. Obviously, the wrong move. That was still a brave move, and I would give you props for attempting that move. Thank so. you very much. I wish I hadn't tried it, but thank you. <laughs> but we'll, hopefully, we'll still you see you around in the loser's bracket, right? Yeah. Sloppy, get over here. Get over here. Come join us. So we're joined by the victor of the last game, Sloppy Poppy. He just, you just three older man. Uh, no, he's sitting he right in front of me. So it's not like talking about him right here because you know he's sitting right across from me. 
Uh, yeah, I'll keep it clean, you know. Oh yeah, I forgot. We are we are a Christian smash. Yeah, that's theme. it. Uh, no, Buddhist, Buddhist. The Christians are violent. Okay, sure. I, why do we say that? Why are we talking about religious stuff on the street? But <laughs> they're like, oh, I'm out of here. How, how did how did that three stock uh, feel? Uh, that shit it felt awesome, and um, I know you're gonna say I made up. I'm gonna make up everything that I, in this first interview. But in the very beginning, when he was like. Shooting projectiles, I was blocking it. No, I, that, back I saw that. It, I saw yeah, that. that was like awesome. That felt good. Why did you change from Mewtwo to Lucas? Uh, he was working out well for you. This is what I always do. I don't want people to know my character. Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't want you to get used to my character and get like a game plan going. I want you to reset it every time. So why don't but, you just main random? Yeah, that's basically what I do. But my randoms are three. I got three randoms. Three randoms, all tandem. Yeah, if you played Ridley, he would have beaten him. So I didn't pick Ridley. So but, will you see your Ridley later on in tournament? Oh yeah, of course. If I play Aku, if I get a hand on like a Terry uh, <laughs> or a Little Mac, you never know. Like, gotta go Ridley against those hand to hand guys. You know what I'm saying? Easy money. It's easy money against them. But I mean, as soon as you get a blaster or something, I'm done. I'm dead. Just carry it off stage. B B B B B kills Ridley. I didn't mean to rhyme that. I'm just black. He is just black. You've heard it here first. That's right, folks. If you want to come see us, come by the Ho Chi Minh City. We're going to get you all twanged up, you know what I mean? This is how you know our scene is multicultural. Yeah, I know, right? The, uh, TK is Japanese. Uh, I'm a minority, too. Huh? I'm a minority, too. Yeah, he's a minority, too. Uh, you can tell by his... His hair and his scary smile that he's a minority. That's how we that's how we know. Look at my haircut and my scary smile. Means that you're a minority. Uh, are these people gonna play yet or not? Alright, so I think Z They are coming up next. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, and we'll it's all hope good. to see you at the winner's friggin' interview. Yeah, well, what is this? Do we have a gang sign now? Pinky. Holy smoke, yeah. what are we pinky swearing? Uh we're pinky swearing that uh on gang. gang. Yeah, oh yeah. Pinky swear on gang. Let's do it. All right. And we're back. All right. Who we got next, Shoda? The, the next matchup, we have Z versus D. Holy smokes, Z versus D already. Now, this that is, is going to be hard to commentate, isn't it? Uh, Actually, no. It's going to be a pretty good matchup. But I am curious because D plays Greninja. He plays... Actually, I don't think it's he's going to Ganondorf. I think I think he's just trolling for the brownie point, which he's I'm totally gonna him. give him. But like, as soon as he like loses the game, he ain't going Ganondorf. And if he's he is, going then we I am going. going yeah, big call. We are gonna see that move. We are gonna big see that new move. move. All right, let's do it. Doria. Whereas Z kind of kind of plays everyone actually a little Samus a little Zelda his main is Zelda his main is flexible well and he said last week he's gonna stick to Ike ah he did. Ike and he went uh, zero well, but, but to be fair whatever you say last week might not apply this week hell I don't remember what I did yesterday. That's fair, that's like, fair. If yesterday I was like, I'm going to play Icon Tournament. Today I'm just going to play Joker. <laughs> Is it not working? We're having uh, controller technical difficulties apparently. But the Ganondorf Zelda matchup, man. I think that is a hard ass matchup for Ganon. <laughs> oh, Z has confirmed it, folks. He says he's thinking about going Zelda. Zelda, Zelda. Oh, and that is going to be Ganon matchup between Zelda and Ganondorf. It is a. Uh, let's just say it's a tough matchup for Ganondorf. There's no reason why Ganondorf should be kidnapping Zelda in all of these Legend of Zelda games. Because Zelda should be spacing out Ganondorf all the time. It doesn't work for some reason. Yep, yeah, it's that one. There's two cables here. Alright. Alright, just hold the seat, I guess. Just let him figure it out, Shoda. We're keep 
Let's keep commentating for the folks watching abroad and back home. What, what do you, I've already said what I think about the Zelda Ganondorf matchup. What do you think? I think Z could be taking the BT if he's careful enough. Maybe Lucina. Maybe Lucina is thinking about Lucina. Lucina, is he? I mean, to be fair, Ganondorf versus most people is a bad he, matchup for Ganondorf. He is known for that, those hot reads. He, he needs is not to be known careful. For he don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you see D in winner's final or something and he plays Ganondorf, I will give him 5,000. Okay. 5,000 Vietnamese doll? Yes. That is a lot I'll of money. I'll pay for his parking. Parking is important, yo. Okay, moment of truth. Ah, uh, Lucina. She is gonna stick with his Lucina. Uh, uh, wait. Oh, shit. Alright. So Z is going to be basically trying to space out Ganondorf with constant forward airs. But can he space out that durian? Pretty easily, yeah. It is pretty huge. Oh, oh, holy smoke. Z starting off with a down air. Like, I, I think Z might not be familiar with Lucina. Because with Lucina, you're supposed to be constantly moving, trying to like outspace. There you go, that's better. So when he was standing in still, jabbing Ganondorf, that's when D punished him. But now now he's like, I'm gonna move. Oh, and a perfect wizard foot coming out from D. Very courage. <laughs> D just yellowed his way into the first stack. Holy smokes, what a baller. Oh man. Oh, that's shield. That's so smart. good. Lucina had a shield breaker. I, I'm i not sure if Shield Breaker is going to play a big of a role because if you can see, like, D is a pretty aggressive Ganondorf. He's not trying to read you for heavy punishes. He's just YOLOing hitboxes and hoping Z runs into them. So maybe Shield Breaker, but I wouldn't bank on it. Yeah, like, you don't see D staying in Shield for too long. Oh, man. Oh, everything about they, Ganondorf keeps so hard and he's just oh, trying to See, he was smart enough not to roll into it. Oh! Z just misspaced a little, but D also flubbed on the ledge edge guard. Alright, this is where Lucina is super strong on uh, ledge traps. See, one thing Z is not doing, he's just getting Ganondorf get back onto the stage for free. Lucina should be ledge trapping. She has such a strong ledge trap game. And Z is trying to just jimp Ganondorf, letting Ganondorf get back to neutral for free and he's paying for it. He should just keep Ganondorf at a constant disadvantage and not get that greedy. Oh, and listen like that. 63% of a There you go, one. there you go. Five so, hits. See, look at that. Like, he's just letting Ganondorf get back on the stage for free. And then that resets neutral. Where's Lucina? Should just be ledge guarding, ledge trapping Ganondorf. Ganondorf's such a slow and big character that you can just keep him at, like, disadvantage for half the game. Enough air from Ganondorf almost killed him. Oh, there. man. That's what, like, she's trying to, like, predict these attacks. Yeah, like, yeah, see? And the wizard food is not gonna take. Z is just going too hard. His reads are too hard. Like, normally with Lucina, you wanna throw out safe, quick moves. Like, forward air, back air. Just throw out Ganondorf off the stage. Keep up a disadvantage. Keep slowly racking up percent. You're gonna get your kill later. Don't be impatient. Whereas when you're impatient and you miss something, Ganondorf's gonna punish you for like 40%, if not even death. I wonder. D, D is definitely sticking with the Ganondorf. This is his big dick move and Z goes with the Zelda! The waifu move! As, as a fan of waifus, I have to cheer for Zelda on this one. Alright. I think D is gonna take it again. No, Z is playing a little smarter now. Because now he's trying to like wall out Ganondorf giving Ganondorf a horrible time to approach and then taking advantage of his really snow like approaches. He's playing the matchup okay so far. He seems to be more practiced with Zelda than Lucina, which is why I thought he was gonna go Zelda first. Yeah, see, like he's trying to 
Ganondorf, what, what's Ganondorf gonna do? He's gonna try to approach, and then there's a knight, and a, like, <laughs> a fireball in his way, and then he approaches, that's exactly it. He approaches, and there's like a smash in his face. What is he gonna do? So, which is why I thought it was gonna be Ganondorf versus Zelda at first. Maybe Z just wanted to warm up his secondaries. Who knows? <laughs> knows but he's working for him i was i was uh, i was clenched right there i wanted the doria to hit doria all right this is when d's like you know what this might be a losing matchup but if i like yolo and like get lucky i win <laughs> oh, <and laughs> so this I, I, i'm expecting i'm expecting like more like yolo dorias just to catch up like he's already far behind like what's he got to lose besides another stop right <laughs> doria that's all right. He, he tried the upskirt move. He tried to shove his uh, leg up her skirt, and it was super effective, apparently. See, he's up the entire stock now. Mm. Keep playing See? patiently. Build up that damage. Yeah. You have the entire stock to do that. That oh, knight. And a sweet spot. That oh, knight yeah. is way too good of a tool against Ganondorf because it has a hitbox. Oh. All right. Is he, is he going to stick with Ganondorf? Is he saying, my dick is, I mean, my, my cojones are just that big. My D is just that big. I wonder. Would you stick with Ganondorf, Shoda? I would. I would too. <laughs> it is such a fun character to just watch. Well, sometimes when you're getting comboed from 0 to 100, it's not so fun. But that one Doria you land, it makes it all the worth it. Oh, oh and he's going to stick with it. He's putting his all his eggs in the one capable basket. So tell me, what can D do to combat uh, this spacing? Start Z? LR, <laughs> LRA start box. <laughs> That's what he could do. He could choose a different character. <laughs> Or he could just like YOLO, rush in, not give Zelda time to set up. Mm. Like even when Ganon does get in though, like Zelda's still super, super hard because her frame data is just better than Ganondorf. It's not that good, but it's better than Ganondorf. Oh. No, he read, he read the get up attack but no he didn't if punish. he read the get up attack he would have jumped and spiked and punished that get up attack for a stop he just reacted because he wasn't sure what she was gonna do mm. yeah oh I see I see so if like the smallness of Smashville is giving him an advantage because that's preventing Zelda from setup I see why he chose it. Oh, oh, this oh is that a was a risky move! Oh, no! When Z dropped down, I was like, no, don't do it! The re grab D read it perfectly and punish it. Like, when Ganondorf is standing at that distance, like, Zelda's up here isn't gonna be big enough to hit, and the re-grab just means the Doria to the face. Like you see, like because um, Smashville is so small, Z hasn't had time to fully charge Knight once this game. Where's last game? Like Knight was just coming out left oh, and right. But Z is coming right back. Fifty-four uh, percent yeah. against Ganondorf, though. This is dangerous. This is this is a great game so far. D has got the stage advantage, but Z has got the Oh my god! The YOLO! Slow down smash, baby! And that is how Breath of the Wild 2 happens. That's right. We got a door for the Yo! Smashville is dirty. I'm going to sweep this stage. And he swept Zelda off along with it. Well played by D, man. Oh. Okay, and now we're just waiting for people to finish up their brackets. Sure.
But what did you think of that last match? Sorry? You and? Hobo. Hobo. Dang, Andrew and Hobo. This is another pretty good match coming up. Andrew is our number one seed. Actually, number, number two, two seed. Andrew is our number two seed, and Hobo is pretty, ranked pretty highly. And I, I, Hobo plays Sonic, and let me tell you, it's a legit Sonic. And by legit, I mean annoying as fuck Sonic, because it's annoying to fight. And that's a great thing when you're playing Sonic. Oh man, you, you cannot know how much I hit Sonic's and hits homing attack. Andrew plays Zelda and the Sonic Zelda matchup. Let's see. Hmm. Well, this could be good. Sonic would have absolutely no trouble approaching, but oh, I know, I know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna call it right now, folks. Sonic is gonna like miss some kind of approach, whether it's like a dash attack or like a grab and an upbeat to death at like 30. <laughs> I, 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 might, I think we're going to see one or two of those in the game coming up. Okay. Uh, somebody move that camera. Hey, Andrew, somebody move that camera. Bring, bring it down. <laughs> Okay, who's Andrew gonna go? Is it gonna be Pichu? Is it gonna be Zelda? What do you think about the Sonic Zelda matchup? It could be Zelda, it could be Pichu, it could be anything, we don't know yet. I am leaning towards Zelda. I, I, Andrew's Pichu is out of practice, let me tell you from first-hand experience. It should stay in the pocket. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so you think we're going to see a Zelda then? Uh, it would be... A pretty ballsy move to play Pichu, let's say. But Andrew's pretty ballsy. Let's go. Let's go. Whereas, who knows? Maybe D could D. I mean, Hobo could pull out Surprise King DDD. I would cheer for Surprise King DDD. Come on. Had it now the best stage! Alright. Oh no! I got hyped for nothing. Town and city. Uh. Hold up. Yep. Like I thought. So Andrew's gonna be playing a very defensive Zelda. Unlike the last game, where Z Zelda was playing like a zoning Zelda, right now he's not gonna try to zone much because Sonic is just so fast that he can get in and just punish him. That's right. So Andrew is gonna just uh, like try to bait something out and then punish it. He's not gonna space him too much. Apparently, somebody just paused. And then we just Whoops. lost signal. Somebody just stamped the console. All right, why not? And we've turned off the switch. Sorry, folks. 
Technical difficulty. People are getting too high. You kids are getting too damn high. Yeah. All right. And we're back. Maybe. Not yet. You know what they should do? They should switch mains just like in the middle of a match. Like, Hobo should just like play Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. Anyways, yeah, you see that? Like, Andrew's not setting up as much. He's not relying on fireballs because he, Sonic's gonna punish him just like that. He tried to set up for the night, and Sonic's just like, fuck you, I'm faster than you. <laughs> so that's why, like, to approach this matchup, Andrew's gonna try to bait something out like a missed dash attack or. Oh, and a perfect and a, that's right. F splash. But, but when Andrew does bait out something that's, like, missed, He's gonna punish that so hard. I'll be the dead. Yeah, he was he was reading, he was reading the grab right there. I see you son. So that's what the spot dodge was for. He was reading a grab, he was baiting it out so he can up beat a death. Oh damn, that was so good. Oh, that was Hobo was so ballsy sure. like that. Oh, he did it twice. He did it twice. The first time I was like, man, you got props, bro. And the second time he just did it again. Oh, and a switch spot. Thank you. Huh? Yeah. Like, you see how Zelda's kind of like forced to stay in shield, try to react, try to bait something? Like, Sonic is dominating the pace of this game, which is what he's supposed to do. And fair enough. Oh! oh, oh. oh and that is an Andrew special! I thought that was a death right there. I was like holding my breath, man. Like Zelda's up B kills just ridiculously early. Oh. And her up air also kills ridiculously early. Like even though Sonic controls the pace of this matchup. Oh, he's gonna <laughs> take it right back. Well, I was gonna say that once Sonic does something wrong, Zelda's gonna punish it. <laughs> Hard. Like normally though, Sonic has such a hard time killing. But the fact that he's having no problem finding these back airs just speaks to his skills with Sonic. Oh, oh, that was that was a brave move to go off stage versus Zelda. Oh, oh, and a good shield coming oh, shit. out from Hobo. And that was IQ 9000 move by Andrew. Did you see that? He up bead knowing the platform was there to keep him safe. Oh, Sonic committed too fast. He should have waited and then reacted to... S oh, that was, I thought that was an up air. That would have killed. All right. See that? Andrew's running up. Yeah, see, now now Andrew's just waiting. Because he knows he's just baiting out some kind of like miss attack. Because he knows once there's a whip, he's just gonna take the stop. So even though Sonic's winning, he can't he can't rest easy. Oh you read the you read the roll backwards too. Uh, oh god! Oh, I knew it! See, I told you! I told you I did! I not told you! Sonic! had a 70% lead, but Andrew was playing defensively just waiting for the read. Like when he ran up and then just shielded in front of Sonic, that's when you know like, oh, he's in a defensive mindset. And when somebody's in a defensive mindset and you just throw YOLO moves like a down air, they're gonna punish you. So when someone's defensive, like you should be defensive as well. Just protect your lead. Don't try to go so hard. Would that down B kills though? It would not, would it? That was an up B. 
You mean the down air? No, there's no, no way down that down 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 kill. He risked it, uh, and he lost it. This is where like you have to start getting into the mind of your opponent. Andrew was playing very defensive at the end, and he should have adapted. Uh, Hobo should have adapted his playstyle to like counter the defensive playstyle. Uh. Oh! 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 And the miss space. What? I mean, spaghetti? Spaghetti! <laughs> if I were playing against someone named Hobo, I, I would probably get spaghetti too. <laughs> oh man, did you see those ledge traps? Andrew was setting up ledge traps, but Hobo navigated that so well. Like, maybe, I think Hobo probably knows like the kind of ledge traps Andrew's trying to set up. Yeah. See that? Like Andrew's kind of like in a defensive mentality right now. Hobo's keeping him trapped. He's keeping him disadvantaged. Andrew's trying anything possible to try to get back on stage. Oh, Hobo let him get on backstage for free. He misspaced the up B. And now Andrew has the advantage state again. And now Hobo's at disadvantage. Oh! No, man, he knows you're gonna shield that phantom and he's just See, gonna go up and That's grab. how quick, like, the tide of this game can turn. Hobo had one miss move. He should have dropped the spring off the stage, but he did it and he died for it. Oh, but Dang. Hobo still, with yeah. all that said, he's still one stock ahead now. Dang. Like, Hobo's having an easy time finding these combos. I don't know if it's like. If it's a true, I don't think it's a true combo. Maybe Andrew's just trying to DI it to aggressively inside instead of like um, the the counter DI, like where he's trying to get out, like DI away. Maybe Andrew's trying to survival DI where he's dying towards him, and that's why he's getting caught. Oh, and no punish coming out yeah. from a up B from Andrew. Look at that ledge trapping. Beautiful. Oh, and oh. the down smash. He's just charging it up, waiting like, for the air dodge. Yeah. Hobo's trying to get back on ledge too aggressively because he's probably afraid of either Andrew setting up or that down air. That's like the third time he's gone for the spring early and then air dodged into death. <laughs> like, at this point, I would like to see Hobo mix up his recovery because Andrew's reading it and killing him for it. He's killed him the past two times he did that recovery. Yeah, see, we're in the same scenario. Like, Hobo has the lead, sure, but leads mean nothing when you struggle to kill. Which is why Hobo's just throwing these YOLO forward smashes in neutral. Whereas Andrew, yeah, he's behind by like 70%, but like maybe 44%, and then he's at, Hobo's at death percent. Or right now, Hobo's at death percent! Oh, gee, shit. And now, Hobo doesn't fight. mix up his curry, yep. and that Phantom Armor gonna take it. So that's one of those matchups where like, yeah, percentage kind of sort of matter, but not really, because Zelda can just kill you so easily. Unfortunate mistakes repeatedly coming out from Hobo. Was it Something really a mistake though? Think about it. Was it really a mistake? Because like, Andrew went down off stage, baited the early up B. So I don't think it was a mistake by Hobo. I think Andrew baited him into doing that because Hobo had to make a decision. He either needed to up B or risk getting down aired. And he was at like, what, like 70 or something, right? And you don't want to lose a stock at 70. So I'm not sure if it was a mistake. I think it was more of a bait. What do you think? And I did think of, now that you talk about it, I think it was a bit too. Yeah. Uh oh! Uh oh! Next! We got... The one! 
the only Sloppy Poppy versus Taco Raptor. Today, if you haven't heard already, it's Taco's last tournament. So, man, we, 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 are, we are, I think we're rooting for her as a whole scene, aren't yep. we? Yep. I'm sure even Sloppy's looping for her too. It's just he doesn't want to lose. But he would want to see her win. Just not over him, right? Like Paco is moving away from the scene. So we want to give her a nice send-off, right? That's right. Does, he re does she really need it, though? Huh? She's a really strong player. She's a really strong player. But Poppy is a pretty strong player, too, I think. Like, but don't I underestimate Poppy, man. Oh, this man, we, we last when we last saw him on stream in the last episode of Dragon Ball Z, like Sloppy was like mutuing and then Lucasing all over the place, and we still haven't seen his Ridley. Whereas Paco is a pure wolf main. Who do you think Sloppy's going to uh, choose versus Paco? I think it's gonna be Lucas. I agree with you. Getting those easy games against Wolf. Easy Wolf, though? Oh, Wolf doesn't man. have the best recovery in the game. Wolf has the best? No. No, no, he doesn't have the best recovery in the game. But at the same time, punishing that is hard, man. Oh, wait. You're talking about Lucas's up B, right? Up B. Uh, no, PK the, PK, the PK Thunder. Oh, you missed out the PK Freeze. Yep. Mm. PK Freeze, PK Thunder, anything in game. Oh, he's thinking about Rins! The Rins! You don't need the head, you just need the tail of that PK Thunder to give. I think it's Ridley too! Yeah! Oh. Alright, this matchup is bad for Ridley. <laughs> so, who do you think you're gonna win this? Uh, I don't know about that. Because, like, Ridley might try to space Wolf out. But Wolf has like lasers and reflectors and like you can try to like send fireballs but it can reflect that too. And Wolf it just has like better frame data. In fact I think Wolf might even be heavier than Ridley. What the heck? So <laughs> Yeah, like right? Like just just send all your fireballs to me. What am I what are you gonna do? Oh I see. Mm. That that's And like, okay, Sloppy's trying to like, space, but Wolf's forward tilt is pretty damn massive. So I'm not sure if you can even like, space Wolf either. And in the air, jeez Louise, I think Wolf is the better character in the air. And Ridley is pretty huge. Combo yep. food. And yep. that Smash gonna take it with Sloppy just uh, choosing a neutral getup. Yeah, I think this is a... I don't think it's a bad matchup, it's still doable, but it is a losing matchup for Ridley. Like, Wolf just does things better. <laughs> oh, but Except the eye, apparently, because I don't think that was a that was supposed to be a death. <laughs> this is pretty good. Yeah, if you notice, like, Meryl, tries to read a lot of roll in. Um, like, yeah, so like, she runs in and like throws a forward smash. Which is fine if you like, can actually think they're gonna do it. But when she does it, like she just gives up stage control like right there. Like right now, she has stage control. But when she runs in, like she just gives stage control back. And, and oh, now she's at disadvantage. And now she's the one, oh, never mind. Oh, like yeah, he's gonna kill. Wait. No, not yet. So like Meryl's like trying to, um, she's, or uh, I mean Paco Raptor is trying to give Ridley too much respect, and I'm not sure if Ridley needs that respect. There you go. Where's what can Ridley do? What can? Yeah, like. Right now, Sloppy's kind of desperate, which is why he threw a down air. But I think Ridley's like ledge trapping is pretty good with that down smash. 
So, like, I think she should, he should have tried to down smash or ledge trap Wolf instead of just YOLO down airing. Like, see, they're they're just trying to space around each other. Um, when that happens, though, the one with the usually the better frame data wins. And in my opinion, Wolf just has better frame data. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's even horrible. And like when Ridley throws out those fireballs, like there's nothing she can do because Wolf first reflects it all. See? Oh! He tried to ledge trap and got punished for it hard. I, I can't blame him for doing it though. Are we gonna see a switch? I would, I would probably think about a switch, right? Because like, Ridley was forced to approach Wolf. Wolf dictated the pace of that game. Whereas like if he was Lucas or something, then that would neutralize Wolf's lasers and give Wolf something else to think about. But maybe he has just confidence in his Ridley. I, I think it's his best character personally. We'll see. Oh, and a counter big music. Oh, what's it gonna be? Bro, 10 Pokemon! The best Pokemon music. Oh, there he goes with the Lucas. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh! Oh, he's thinking! He's thinking about it! Somebody get out a timer! Somebody put one minute on the timer! Yeah, I'm not sure if Mewtwo would have been a good matchup because he died so early. Wolf's knockback is just so, so strong. Alright. Huh? Yeah, that's why, like, the PK Thunder doesn't always work against Wolf. Like, sure, Wolf's recovery is bad, but he has so many tools to, like, mix it up, including that down B just to air stall, right? Oh, man. Well, Sloppy would have more matchup experience than me. Oh, and that's <laughs> that game I was talking about, the Tale of the Thunder. Do that three more times and That's right. I was about to say, Sloppy has more experience than me, but he, he's, he's going out to try to, like, ledge guard. I think he just stay on stage and ledge trap with the PK Thunder, like he just did. Yeah. Oh, nice Just keep so throwing out of PKs. Yeah. Meryl, or Echo Raptor, it seems to be trying a lot of like aerial approaches and she's getting stuffed out. Like Wolf, like right there, neutral air or forward air to approach. Oh, oh my gosh! That was oh. And just like that, the and the, the Lucas counter pick is coming through for Sloppy Poppy. Right? You see that? Paco is trying to to get like get in using her aerials. And Lucas can space that with the Zare. Oh, oh shit! Let go of the and shield. the Zare is going to outspace all of Wolf's options, right? So I would probably think about trying like a different approach, whether it be a grounded approach or like just make us up lasers or something else, because the aerials options are getting red. It's getting countered by Zare, by up tilt, by different things. Dang! Right. So right now, like. Lucas is just facing safe moves. Oh! What a free stop coming out from Snow. Ole, 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 ole. Three stock. Three stock. Ole, 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 ole. Three stock. Three stock. All right. So that counter pick paid off. Big shot in for Sloppy. What, are you, do you think you go. Paco's gonna counter pick next? I think, uh. Cause she just got 3 0 Paco is gonna stick with her wolf here. Yeah? 
and Sloppy is surely is gonna stick with what's working, which is Lucas. Ah, I see. So she's just changed, like, she's changed to platform. She's saying that platform is gonna give her more aerial approaches. So she's even doubling down on aerial approaches. And this uh, stage have a wall, which could help with recoveries. Does Wolf have a wall jump? Wolf has a wall jump. Oh, cool. See, like, those platforms can stop projectiles, stop some of this PK shenanigans. Maybe that's, that's what that's she's true. drinking on. Yeah, I, I think in the air, Wolf has better, just better frame data. Lucas has better range, but maybe she's banking on like, I have better frame data you, I'm just gonna use the platforms to get in, and then punish. Yeah. Uh, no, she, she, she's, still, she's still trying to go so hard for these reads and then losing stage position, and now she's at disadvantage because of that. Like, Wolf's forward smash sure is pretty good, and if she reads it once, it might kill, but like, mm, I think she can like go for safer options that can also kill, like the back uh, back throw well, kills, no back, also no like the forward throws, tilt kills, kill. right? The back air can also kill with less risk. There you go. Here's stop coming out from hardcore. What is the answer here? So for who? For Sloppy. For He's Sloppy? Almost a whole, whole stop mm. behind. Because right now, right, like, why he won last time was he was just spacing himself correctly. Now, like, he's just approaching, uh, he's approaching Wolf, which means it's a, it's a match of frame data. And Wolf is a better frame data, so that's why he's winning. Like, he should use his airs to space, he should use all of his PK tools to space. Now it's harder from because of the platforms, and that's why Mero picked this stage. Pretty smart stage pick. Huh? Really smart stage pick. Yeah, that's right. Which is why, like, stage counter picks are such a huge thing in the Smash scene. Like, you see that? Like, now he's just, like, trying to get center stage, YOLOing a Oh, attack. and a two frame. Yeah, that's, that's, that's normal. That's normal, honestly. Good stuff, good stuff. See, like, he's just fine standing next to Wolf. He's fine just jabbing the shield of Wolf. Last match, he wasn't fine doing that. He was keeping Wolf away. He was keeping... Oh, oh and an unfortunate Ole, 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 the reverse Ole. Meryl answering in the best way she could. Ole, stop sloppy back. <laughs> I, th I think we need a third, a uh, uh, best of five here to see how many Olays we can get. I gotta win! I gotta win! I gotta win! Sloppy is happy with a win. I don't think he's that happy. I, I think he's he's a little salty. What do you think? I think he's just he's just putting up a facade. He's just smiling. On the inside, he's just like raging. He's going to beat himself up tonight over that SD. He's going to remember it and be like, uh. All right. Oh, next we have Camus versus the Dwarf. Dwarf. He has abandoned Ganondorf, folks. He, he's saying, loyalty means nothing to me. I want tearless. I just want to play. I just want to play. You can play with Ganondorf. You can practice DI. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Camus is a diehard Palutena main, so. So Palutena versus Ganondorf. I don't think he's going to go with Ganondorf here. No! It, could be bossy, it has to be Ganondorf. We'll see, uh, we'll see. I'm praying so hard for the door. I'm getting my D out for the door. But honestly, Ganondorf will get bopped. <laughs> I think everybody knows it. He's gonna get bopped. Probably Greninja? 
maybe? Hmm, well, let's see. I actually think um, Greninja versus Palutena matchup is, yeah, like I thought. So D is going with the Greninja because I think it's a winning matchup for Greninja, honestly. Like, Palutena has trouble with people who overwhelm her. Like, Camus or Palutena is going to love walling you with fires and auto reticles, whereas Greninja can get it exactly, get oh, in and, and punish her laggy frames. It's right off the bat. Yeah. This is normal Greninja thing, though. Like, I I'm curious how these going to approach once Camus is closer to kill percent, though. Like, right now, see? Like, Greninja's water shuriken, like, will force, sometimes, it'll force Palutena to approach as well. So Palutena cannot just sit back. So it's going to be like close frame data versus frame data. And in that case, Greninja would win. But Palutena does have like invincible tools that help make up for a lo like losing frame data, like a back air. And a dash attack. Yeah, that's right. Back air, dash attack. But the dash attack is way too slow for someone like Greninja, so I don't think we'll see much of that. I think we're going to see more of like short hop neutral airs or back airs in a neutral. Yeah, like if she misses a, like a dash attack, that's like oh, down tilt to death. Oh, wow, that was so smooth. Like. Greninja was baiting, he predicted a ledge teleport getup. That's why a Camus teleport to the, the platform. That was, see, the back air. That was so smart by Camus. He baited the getup, back air for the kill. Yeah. I don't think, personally, I don't think we'll see much of a dash attack. Maybe a few here and there, but I think we're gonna see much more of back air to try to like counter the frame data. Yeah. Like most Palutena's, would have teleported down for the surprise. But Camus teleport canceled on the platform just so he would can get like uh, la lags from his getup. That is so smart. Oh man, that should have been like a back air for the kill. Like D's probably beating up his, see? Yeah, like D's is trying to like kill right now. He's kind of frustrated. Oh. 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 Just like that. I don't think that was true though. I think, was it true? I think that was too high of a percent and Camus like missed the DI uh, de wrong or something. Which Camus rarely does, but he's still human after all. Yeah. Okay. So Camus right now is trying to time D's jumps because Camus knows that is D's main approach. Time ju D's jumps with like neutral air and trying to catch them. Yeah. Man, I think uh, someone in our scene is uh, token something, doing a little, uh, a little happy dance. Mm. Oh man, that was smart. Oh. That was smart. I yep, just love to go for the F's and guard up smash, trying to catch people with the true. But that's why D being patient and going for the two hydro pump was good. But man, what can D do here? I think he's playing the matchup fairly well. He's trying to catch Palutena's landing. But like, those Pokemon platforms are not helping him. Because it gives Cat Palutena so many options to land. That he, has, he can't cover them all even though Greninja is so fast. Yep. Okay, so now that now that D is playing a more grounded game, you see less neutral airs from Camus. Camus isn't trying to catch the jump anymore. He's just trying to back air and then beat the dash attack with the invincible back air. So all these adaptations are happening in front of us in real time, which is what makes Make Smash such a fun game. That's right. See, like dash attack. The few times Camus does go for dash attack, like he'll get punished so hard for that. Oh, and an unfortunate... Was yep. that... Was that what? Bad DI? No, that was actually good DI because he DI'd away. 
bad DI would be DI towards Palutena. That was just way too high of a percent. So D DI'd it correctly. That was just, eh. Uh, So that was a constant like game of trying to outframe Palutena with aerials. Palutena adjusting, trying to go for neutral air to catch those aerials, and then Greninja just throwing out dash attacks to try to catch the landing, and Palutena throwing up back airs to try to catch the dash attacks. So constant, constant readjustment. That was a brave move by D, that, that um, sneak attack, but I don't blame him. If it's not working, might as well throw something else, right? Like, a, you, you can't hurt. Oh, I see. So now, instead of, tr instead of trying to um, catch Palutena with short aerials, like neutral air or laggy ones like forward air, he's doing back air, which beats Palutena's neutral air. So that seems to be working and it's gotten him percent so far. Yeah, so D's trying to do the, he's, he's being greedy, he's being I in those down throws where he should be trying to DI out so he doesn't get comboed. And when he DI's in, like Pelutena gets such damage dealing combos like neutral air to like 90% or back air to death, things like that. He should be definitely be doing DI out because down throw cannot kill. It can combo, but it can't kill. There you go, see? When he DI's down and out, he survives it. But now Camus is reading his DI, not letting him land. Oh, it's just the last hit of the up air, that's all you need. Yeah. See, when you DI down, oh fuck, oh he mixed up the DI because he knew Camus is re Oh, IQ level 9000 plays from D. But Camus is still winning. Because like, even if D's defensive game is on top, he's still getting damage. Whereas Camus isn't getting damage. Oh, and a perfect read on the teleport. Uh, Catching it with an up smash. Mm. That's right. He is desperate so, yeah. no, no, to close out this block. I, th I still think D's playing fairly patiently. He's trying to space forwarders, which can beat the neutral air of space well. Um, like, by desperate, a desperate Greninja would do like, like YOLO down smash, which is instantaneous and kills. Yeah, I, he still he, he still has his head on him. He isn't desperate for the kill yet. Oh, he's beating up himself for that mistech. Most Greninjas love mistech because yeah, exactly. You can down to, you can grab to the imagination because there's so many things he can do. Oh, and Cam is trying yep. to go for the less trump. And then he gave up the advantage. Oh, see? Kami just throwing out neutral airs, predicting the jump. And D, instead of punishing the landings, is giving him the jump. Oh, very much wow. to the smart play from D, just hanging out a ledge. So that was a badly spaced dash attack. If Greninja spaces dash attack well, he'll go through the sealed. And there's not much Greninja, I mean, Palutena can do then. But one bad spacing versus Camus, and then you lose the stock. Perfect. There wasn't too much Camus could do there because all his options were blocked by that one ledge. Yeah. These trying to ledge trap Camus with like repeated down smashes and it just doesn't seem it working. Like I would probably try something else instead of just down smashes. Which, which, which works, but like, man, not, not against Camus. Oh, that one works. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna try to Hydro Pump or something. No, see, oh, he's, he's, tr tried again. he's trying to Down Smash again. And Camus is like, yeah, I've seen this three times. I punished you three times, so I'm just gonna punish you again. Uh, why does he keep he's, doing he's that? He's micro Q percent right at the ledge. That's it. Yeah. So Greninja at the ledge has different options. He can run against Camus' shield. 
bait something out or maybe even shield grab because he had already conditioned Camus to either get up attack or just stay in shield at the ledge from his repeated down smashes, right? And Greninja's forward throw kills. So if I were D in the future, I would try to mix up my ledge trapping options. Greninja has the frame data to ledge trap in so many different ways. And he has a forward throw that kills. So he should be taking advantage of that. Not just spamming down smashes, hoping for a roll in. He was hoping for a miracle. It does not pay off. But mi mi miracles rarely, rarely pay off. You have to play smart, not play and pray. Or pray and play. Because that's, that's how you you get too old in tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it, has, it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. But when you try it three times... He tried it like four or five times, I think. And it hit once. Did it hit once? Yep. Let in me the remember. middle, in the center of the stage, it doesn't. But help. that's not that's not ledge trapping. Hitting it once in the center stage means you're just playing neutral. D should go back and like look at learn how to uh, float chart ledge trap with Greninja, so he can have more things to mix it up. Now that we have some downtime, I uh, <laughs> I need to uh, okay. go to the toilet a bit. Excuse me. Today's been a pretty good turnout, hasn't it, Shota? Alright. We've been forgetting to do that. <laughs> That's okay. It's we been forget grand things finals all, time. all over the place. You know, we should forget because we should always have things to improve. Because I think our commentary is pretty perfect. Yeah? Yeah. Don't you think? Just stay so we can commentate together longer. So let's make more mistakes so we can have things so we can look back on like, yeah, that commentary was fire. But we, we got we to gotta update the, the overlay more. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is D going to Ganondorf? I I don't know. I think man. so. 
If I were the, I would probably. Ken is, Ken is a pretty new. I don't think I've ever seen him in this scene. So I think this is his first time. So we don't know anything him, about him yet. That's right. And when you have, when you don't know something, you pick Ganondorf. That's right. Ganondorf into the unknown. What was it? Was it Neil Armstrong that said, "One small step for man, one giant leap for Doria"? <laughs> well, I think okay, it was yeah. Neil Armstrong. <laughs> Probably. One giant leap for Doria. Okay, I guess we'll oh, find out. Doria! Actually, he is sticking with his skin off, and I don't know, man. Who's Kinda gonna go? I hope Ken goes Ganondorf too. Yeah? Yeah. In fact, I this hope everybody goes Ganondorf all the time. Don't you? No. Why? The game would end too fast. I, the game would be too hyped. Fuck. Alright. Alright. This Looks is uh, like is gonna go Ganondorf versus a little boy. I think I've seen this on uh, a Pornhub or something once upon a time. I think we've seen this in every Zelda game except yeah. for Breath of the Wild. I think uh, maybe I've seen this before, you know, like growing up my daddy was Ganondorf and I was, uh, I was Ness and I was like, please daddy, don't do it me! Doria! Well, he tried twice. He, he tried, you know, just like my daddy had tried to do it me. Oh man. We're seeing some, uh, no! Oh, he missed the recovery on this. No, he, he saved himself. He didn't want to be Doria. That would have been child abuse. We would have had to censor the stream. Like, we would have, like, taken so the stream. Been... No! Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Somebody called child protection. I don't think that, uh, do they have that in Vietnam? The yes, parents could just they, beat they do. Kids. Yes, they do. Oh, good. Somebody call it! We have a little boy in trouble! He's being beat! You know what would be perfect to end this dog? A Ganon side. By Ganon side? That, that would- oh, oh! Doria's my. even better! Get inside him! No, Doria! <laughs> this is- I don't know what- I don't know what I'm looking at anymore. Please censor this. This is unrivaled violence. I did not sign up for to commentate a war zone. Oh no! Oh, an unfortunate air dodge. That, that's what I would do too against my daddy. It was like, please don't beat me, daddy. I'm gonna air dodge. And my daddy was like, Doria! Oh yeah. This, this is definitely Ken. First time he doesn't even have a controller configuration. Just going with all the faults. <laughs> the best scheme. Oh man. How, how should... Let's be serious though. If I were a little boy... Actually... Oh, he doesn't want to be a little boy okay. no more. He, he says, I've grown up. I've drank my milk. I'm coming back for the revenge. I have a sword now. Oh shit. He's switching us as well. Going with the Mara. Let's see how well his spacing is. With Mars, man, your spacing has to be immaculate. That's right, you know it when you hear it. Actually, that hit sound effect. I would say this is a winning matchup for Young Link. What do you think? Oh, it depends on how well Kins perform here. I mean, like, think about it. At long distance, like, Kin is gonna dictate the pace of the game with boomerangs, with arrows. And when they get close, Young Link has better frame data. The only place Marth has an advantage is when he spaces things perfectly. And it's so hard to space perfectly as Marth, right? That's right. Oh, never Which, mind. That he was just spaced perfectly star. right there. So let me just eat my words. If he can space perfectly, Marth wins every matchup 100 0. <laughs> yeah. I think Rin is definitely playing this matchup the right way. Like, force Mars to approach, just make a wall of projectiles, oh, and get him to a higher percent, and then, now, 
like a neutral air would kill. Yeah, there you go. Make Mark jump, catch his landing. Ken's playing this just right, just right. Perfect. He skipped throwing out his yeah. smash. He shouldn't. Ken should not throw out that hook shot. Because there's just too much lag, and that's how Mark gets in. Like, if you look at his down air, you would think that move has so much lag, but actually has- Oh no! Oh, and the uh, disrespect! Tank. You know how King could have saved himself there though? Pull out a bomb? Exactly. Before the up B, he should have pulled out a bomb, maybe throw it, run himself into it, he would have lived. Oh, oh Dolphin Slash, but just get, get a light punish. He, why he Dolphin Slash was to get out of the combo. Marth has one of the best get off me moves in the game in that Dolphin Slash because it comes out in like what, frame one frame and one, it's invincible. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Kin is playing this matchup so well. Much improved. Force Marth to approach, do some aerial shit, get wrecked. This is still doable, but Kin needs to be very careful here. He's That's at right. 83%. That's right. A sweet spot, back air is gonna kill this person. Uh -huh. Oh, and an, another unfortunate Ken was on SP. the way back! I was believed! I was starting to believe! But Ken says, you know what? The only person that can kill me is myself. And I'm I out of here! That. I can respect that. I can respect that too. You know, it's like the samurai way. Just say Puku out of there. <laughs> and then... You win something. I think you win the... There's some honor or something in that, don't you think? Yep. <laughs> Not too much honor, but... Some honor. Some kind of honor. Like, if I were about to get, like, three socks, I would be like, <laughs> GG, man, I'm out of here. <laughs> is that honor, though, or is that rage quit? Uh... That is rage quit. Can rage quits be honorable ever? No. No? I don't Why not? So. No. Because you give given up. But maybe that's like, you know, life. It's like a greater metaphor for life. Sometimes things in life just doesn't go your way. And no matter how hard you try, you just get 3 0 by like your boss. Yeah, so you just, just go ahead and SD? Exactly, he's like, just no. bend over boss and just take me if you the bot boss. Like, whatever you say boss. Right? No. That's, like, that's like our job sometimes. Like, if you argue you're against your boss and you 3-0 your boss, it's like, yeah, you're fired. If I have a shit bot, I will just quit the job before they fire me. <laughs> uh, if anyone working at Riot's watching, I am not bitching. I have a perfect job. <laughs> Don't tell my <me>, boss. <laughs> Who's your boss? Um, Hakim. It's really hard to pronounce. Does he have a Facebook? I don't believe. I, I have never searched for it. No. I'm gonna search Hakim for him. Hakim Johnson. Hakim Johnson. <laughs> what a name, Hakim yep, Johnson. Really hard pro to pronounce. Man, Hakim. Oh, what? I, I like that name. I like that name. Yeah? That's a very manly name. Yeah? Johnson is a very manly name. <laughs> <laughs> so Shoda, let's talk about you. Back yeah. when you do play Smash, who do you, who's your main? Uh, I mean Wolf. Uh, oh yeah, I remember playing your Wolf, that's right. Lucina. Oh yeah, that's right, I remember playing remember play A little bit too. of Lucina as well. Um, and then you played Isabelle against me just because you counterpicked me, like a bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I didn't mean Isabel, uh, it was picked up on a dare. Somebody dared me to get her to Elite Smash, so like, I was like, face printed to my computer for like six hours a day, and it takes me like a week. Fair. Yeah. Finally got her to Elite Smash. Can you guess who my main was back in the day? Back in the day, I'm That's gonna right. guess. Is before this, before with, the patches. Which, which uh, Smash was it? Smash Ultimate, before the patch, pre patch. Before the three patches. Uh, Ganondorf? No, of course not. I wish! I should have made wish. Ganondorf. No. Okay, I play your Snake, but... Uh, he's not my main, no. He's, he's my Brawl main. main. Okay. Snake is like Lucina, the old... Maybe? 
No, anyone can play Lucina. Nobody mains Lucina. Lucina is like everybody's waifu. She will never be just your waifu because anyone can play Lucina. You just pick up a controller and you're naturally good at Lucina. Are you though? <laughs> you're only good, good. You're not the best. Nobody will ever be the best Lucina. It's not like yeah. MK Leo where there's like a Joker. Everybody plays Lucina, dude. Um, no, my main back in the old days was uh, Olimar. Really? Yeah. But then they nerfed him to the ground. He doesn't have a shield anymore. Like, I would have full shield, and I would get shield spoke. So it's like, yay, this is fun. I'm basically playing Smash Ultimate without a shield. Who needs a shield anyways, right? I need a shield sometimes. I need a shield too, goddammit. Which is now I play Sneku. He is husband though. So let's talk a little more about uh, Vietnam. Yeah. Because it's so cool. Like, how little. If, if anybody from abroad wants to come in Vietnam and check out our scene, like, how much do you spend a day on food, honestly? On food? Yeah. Uh, for local, I say uh, ab around two to three bucks. Two to three bucks a day, right? Three bucks a, a day, yeah, yeah. Three meals. Look at that, guys. Like, Vietnam is cheap and delicious. Like we mentioned at the start, Vietnamese food is good, man. And healthy. And healthy, too, yep. And for three dollars a day, man. Like, what is three dollars gonna get you in America? Like McDonald's dollar menu. Half a uh, San Francisco hot dog. Oh, and <laughs> as someone who's like from San Francisco, don't even get me started, man. Like, am I right? My goodness. Right? <laughs> oh shit! Now it is Camus versus Danny Yola. Danny Yola. Representing his previous company. Now sure it should be Danny EMG now, but still representing the Incineroar. Jesus Christ. I think this is a horrible matchup for Incineroar. What do you think? I think so too. Huh? Um, Yola is a pretty aggressive player. You can make it work. I am not sure about that. Because like, their frame data plays a big role in this game. And like, sure Incineroar is like winning in percent at first, but like... <laughs> he, like oh. Danny needs to rely on like a YOLO move to even take a stop. Or else he's not gonna touch Camus except with like his weaker moves. And whereas Incineroar is fairly easy to edge guard, especially for someone like Palutena. Palutena is just so good at just chilling out and waiting for options. Yep, the, that's the right. Opponents. So he Palutena just... is dictating the pace through space forward airs. Like, what is Incineroar gonna do when she spaces forward airs on your shield? Incineroar's options are just all so slow or short range, right? Like, damn, that was smooth. Like, sure, Danny was winning at first, but now he just can't touch Gamus. And just and, like that, two stock on. Yeah. Thomas what do you think Danny a... can do to like cut <laughs> Palutena? <laughs> I don't know. I am just as clueless as Danny is right now. Huh? Okay, I see. The two times he's been able to hit her recently, he's punished the zoning tools of Palutena, uh, the auto reticle. So which is why I don't think Camus is going to auto reticle no, anymore. Oh, that's Getting right. Some damage in. He can counter. Yeah, and that's kinda, stick that revenge. He might be forced to do that actually. Yeah, oh. there you go. He might There's be forced to like stuff. YOLO counter, pray for a hit, and then kill Palutena like 30. He's figuring it out. No, 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 I don't think Countering those out. auto reticles. Because like at low percent, you can combo someone. I don't. 
That's how you play at the higher and the mid percent when combos no longer work that define you as a player. But yeah, I'm surprised Camus is going with so many auto reticles. He's been punished so hard by them. Like, well, to be fair, Camus isn't really worried. So I think what was going on through Camus's mind there was at the first half of the game, he didn't do any auto record. He just took advantage of like frames, uh, frame data and just out framed Incineroar. By the end, he like he, he took it easy, I think, because he had such a strong lead. So that's why he was start starting to throw out those auto reticles. Uh oh. I'm not sure if the state, the platforms here help Incineroar actually, because that, that'll just make it easier for Palutena to combo, right? Like, without the platforms, he could have gotten in easier on those auto reticles. Whereas now, he has to worry about platforms when he's coming in, right? So, like, now Camus can even camp better. <laughs> and then, like, Camus's combos work better because of the platform. See, like, right there. If Camus would have read that roll in, Incineroar would have kept just kept at disadvantage. That's true. So I'm not really sure what Danny is thinking with the stage counter pick. What do you think? Do you have any ideas? I have no idea, no. Okay. <laughs> Let me uh hmm. Hmm, I think Danny could just stay back and No, he, he up can't his stay revenge. back. Because if Danny were to stay back, he would be auto reticle to death. <laughs> you can stack up the rest of the damage oh, no. and then go in for something crazy. But that crazy, like YOLO, is, usually isn't gonna work out. Like right there. Now he's oh, just being and zoned. Just... And the platform is just helping him zone faster and giving Palutena better escape options from disadvantage because he can just teleport cancel on the platform. So I'm not really sure what, like, what is go? What is well, why he counterpicked this stage? Because it seems like such a bad stage for Incineroar at the moment. But I'm willing to be proven wrong, and I'm hoping Danny Yola proves me wrong. Oh, and a perfect read on Man. teleporting place. Yeah. Really nice. <laughs> what does that do? It gets them percent. Who cares? Like right now, he can't. He can't be worried about percent. He should be taken up stock. Or else the lead is gonna just continue to snowball and the platforms is just giving Camus more options to mix up his disadvantage stage. As you can see when he was like going up and down the platforms. And like there's nothing Incineroar can do. <laughs> oh and yeah, see, up air is just like, right on top of platforms. That was, He's that was an up air taking advantage of platforms for an easier up air for a quick kill. So like, man. Whatever Danny Yola was like planning by counterpicking this stage soon, I want to see it soon. In fact, I'm, I really want to see it soon if he's going to bring it back. Because right now, oh, he, he's pretty far behind. This is just one entire stop behind. It's still doable. That's right. But Incineroar can kill at 30%. Did you see those videos? Yep. If he, Incineroar like absorbs an attack, goes on rage mode and power smashes, he kills at like 30%. I'm hoping to see that personally. Will Camus give him one though? No. He will not. No, he will not. Like, look at that. The platforms are just him, threw him up so hard. He used the platforms to read the get up and then use the platforms to go get for easier up airs. So, Daniola, come over here. Let's, let's hear some words from the man himself. So we were like, why are you going to uh, Battlefield? Because, because Battlefield kind of seems to like screw you up even worse because the platforms g make, give him like better camping tools and better escape tools. What were you, you thinking? Mean, you, mean you, mean, you, mean, the you mean Yoshi's, right? You mean Yoshi's, right? That was kind of like a Battlefield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I picked Yoshi's because it's a smaller Battlefield. Incineroar is pretty good on Battlefield too, but I know Camus is really good on Battlefield. Especially with the platform cancels. Exactly. But, you know, I want to be Camus when he's at his best, bro, so 
<laughs> Spoken like a true warrior. I would, I would, I would, Put I would, some I would never on bet on Battlefield against Canvas. I want Canvas to go there. If I want to face him at his best. Yeah, I barely get to play Canvas anyways. I want to play him on his best stage. Respect, folks. Right. Respect. I, Even though he went 0-2, he went out with style. Respect, folks. Okay, but remember, Yo Danny Yola is not out yet. He still has a loser bracket run. That's right. He can still make it. But I'll tell you who's already in loser's bracket. Hobo and Sloppy Poppy playing for their tournament lives. And Paco Raptor, apparently. Uh, not yet. Yeah. Sloppy and Hobo first. What? All right, if you're new to the scene, be sure to follow us on Discord, Twitter, and Facebook. The link is on the screen right now. That's right, Smash Bros. Come join us, end. come play with us, come have fun. But out of the three, YouTube, Twitter? Do we have a Twitter? YouTube, Twitter, and Where, Where's our Discord? Uh, I don't think we have custom URL for Discord yet. That's oh, why they put it in. All right. Well, you can find our Discord by um, going first by to going our to Facebook. Facebook. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next match is gonna be between the Papa Sloppy Poppy and the Hobo. Man, I think these two players are evenly matched. So I'm really looking forward. Lucas versus Sonic. That's right. Man. Actually, I'm not sure who this matchup would favor, right? Because Sonic can rack up damage more easily, but Lucas can kill way more easily. Hmm, let's see, let's see. Oh, that's smart. I see, I see. So Sloppy is trying to like zone him out with like PK Thunders, which cover the ground approach option. And when he gets close, Sloppy is just shielding. And yeah, oh, right? And so that prevents the grounded. So Hobo has to go through the air, which Sloppy can right, anti air. Right. I think I see what's, what's the strategy here. So how should Hobo counter this? Oh, what he's trying to absorb there. Yeah, that was probably a misinput. I think I wouldn't. I wouldn't say because Sonic doesn't have projectile. Oh, back throw, kill, so close. All right. Damn, that was that oh, back and air. The spring. No, no, no. He can make it. Lucas recovery is crazy. Yeah, that back air from Sonic was ballsy. Oh, he's not yeah. able to mash out of that. All right. Enough. So right now, Sloppy's strategy is winning. Hobo needs to figure out some way so he can approach from the ground or approach from the air without getting punished. So like, yeah, that, that makes sense. So you see, when Hobo's too far away, Sloppy feels comfortable, he goes for like the PK fires. So Hobo needs to keep it like close, but not so close. Close enough when Sloppy like, yeah, exactly. Close enough when Sloppy goes for the PK something to punish it. So I think Hobo should like, yeah, that might be a little too close, but like going, going for like a mid distance game, just to pressure Sloppy, just to like threaten something, like to prevent Sloppy from PK firing, just like that. Because at long distance, Sloppy's going to PK fire all day and that's how he was able to take, like, uh, prevent the grounded approaches and take the first stop. Oh, very nice. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Hobo's playing this much better. A at a closer distance, that's when Sonic has, like, the frame disadvantage and the movement disadvantage. So th that's, that's probably what sh a Hobo should do. Yeah, that's exactly oh, it. At that throw, range, bait out something bad like that grab and whip punish it. Except whip punish it better. All right. 
Oh man, Sloppy still exactly. Sloppy is trying to go for this edge guard, which Hobo has a perfectly adjusted around. Because you see, Sonic's up B is invincible. Oh! Can you DI that up throw? Uh, yeah, but you have to DI it away. Which Sloppy did, to be fair. Maybe it was just too high of a percentage. Maybe it was a mix-up from Sloppy. Uh, I don't think it was a mix-up, because he <laughs> if he mixed up, he would have died even more. So, <laughs> but the edge guard! Oh, Sloppy's going for it! I mean, Hobo's going for it. He's no, and Hobo is just keep throwing out this. No, no. Hobo, Hobo has to. Yeah, yeah. Trying to make something happen here, but you he's, see, he's like working on out so stage, hard. Sonic's gonna have kind of trouble killing because like his back best tools, like the back air, is gonna have trouble hitting because Lucas is just so goddamn short. He's just so short, right? So like, it's gonna be like Yolo smashes in neutral or the ledge guard. Oh, right now, actually, I think a back throw at the ledge would probably kill as well, but not a forward tilt. Yeah, he's, he's, he's trying to throw out these, yep, YOLO forward forward smash. Like, those back airs are going to be so hard to land, just because how short Lucas is. Oh, and Hobo has a mountain to climb here, 96%. Yeah, I would say Hobo definitely has a match mountain to climb. Because it's not like the Zelda matchup where Zelda can just kill you so early. Like Sonic can't really kill. So what would what oh, would you Hobo can see do? Sloppy is yeah. trying to do hanging like, out the I ledge. think if I were Hobo in this Yeah, not much you could do. I think Hobo played it well though. Because in that situation, all you can realistically do is go for like the gym and just hope that something hits. Or else uh, Lucas just had the complete advantage in that situation. He had the damage. He could kill more easily. There's not much Sonic can do. Okay, let's see what's the counterpick stage here. Oh, man. What, what, if what I were, if I were Hobo, think? I would counterpick somewhere like with less space. Because he was wearing his best damage oh, okay. when he was going in there. So he counterpicked his home stage. Green, green. Give me that green, green. I mean, not green, green. Not green, green. No, what's, uh, what's it called? Green Hill Zone. Green Hill, that's right. Green Hill, but uh, Really cannon. Actually, uh, yeah, no, that makes sense. Because the, the what's it called? Final Destination gives him the most approaches options like that. So there's no platforms to get in the way of his Rojo homing attack. So yeah, I think this is like, this is, has to be his stage. If he doesn't want here, then... It's GG's lights out for him because this is probably his best stage. I don't know why Sloppy let him come here actually. See, like maybe Sloppy is making a statement. True. You see, he keeps trying to land those back airs, but unlike in other matchups where we've seen Hobo before, like his back airs just are having so much trouble landing because Lucas is just so short. And then, yeah, Lucas is just stuffing out all of these approaches. <laughs> not, not with, not with forward smash though. So. Oh, you see that? That was a di. That was the di mix up, I think. No, that wasn't a di mix up. No. Okay, that was a di. So if we're, he, we're expecting a back throw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw and he, he up a back then. throw. Exactly. That's why he went straight up. That was a smart move by Sloppy. Hobo is not really far behind, 92%. This is a kill percent. Can uh, he make no, something happen here? The the only way Hobo would kill right now is with the gym. A forward smash wouldn't kill at this percent. No, not at all. So I would say Hobo is very, very far behind. But that's what he needs to do. He needs more of that. He needs to drop those springs. He needs to drop oh, all these things. On the stage. Really unfortunate. Yeah. See? Like... The forward smash? Like now the forward smash might kill. But not 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 back below 100. There is no way. See like now he's YOLOing up airs, YOLOing back airs. Which would work if Lucas was bigger. But he's just so damn small that like you can't really do it. Because Sonic's back air, you need such a precise timing for that. Ugh. Oh, and just patient wait. It's just gonna get punished. Yeah. There's not, there, there's not much Sonic. Besides YOLO forward smash in neutral. 
And this is the exact same scenario we see the last match, 97%, yep. 0%. You see how Sloppy has adopted to Sonic's charge. When Sonic is spin charging in front of his face, like Sloppy no longer throws out PK fires because it's too dangerous, but he throws out the grab, which covers the grab so brilliantly. So like, either Hobo has to space his charge attacks better, or just not charge attack, because he's not getting much follow-up after the spin dash. Oh, uh, that was a- Oh man, he should have kept pressuring shield. I, that would have been such a good place to just keep throwing out moves. Yeah. No, no. Oh! oh really nice yeah. catch. That was oh, a oh, very oh. nice catch. I think that was a back air that did it. And that was a brave back air, man. And now they're all tied up. Yeah, see, now Hobo's, Hobo's just staying close, punishing Sloppy before having worse frame data. That's right, he's just spac spacing around Sloppy's options, punishing all, like, laggy moves like a PK fire, or whip attacks, yeah. So, I, I, I think, I think Hobo's, Hobo's adapted extremely well to this matchup. But is it soon enough though? He is one no, match No, no, they're, they're still tied, they're still tied. Because Sonic is at a low enough percent where he can safely rack up more percent. Oh, yeah, he's he's been bad dodging way too many times. He hasn't been punished yet, but Sloppy's gonna punish him sooner or later, and it was sooner. Yep, he needs to mix up the timing of that air dodge. Oh, he's gonna spot dodge again, yeah, yep. Oh, another option. Yep. Back toe, he's just not gonna kill See, here. Like, that, what, what would have that forward smash done? It would have done nothing. It wouldn't have killed. I don't know why Hobo forward smashed there because that just put him in a disadvantage. He should have went for something safer, like a tilt or a grab or something else not punishable. That's safe. Like you... you oh, oh, man! man. He's behind yeah. him. What a dirty, dirty down smash. That's right. <laughs> So normally, you only want to throw your most committal moves, like your forward smash, when like they're at kill percent. So like when you connect, you get a stop, right? But at that point, Sloppy was at 45%. So if he connected, oh, big whoop, so what, you're at disadvantage again. That's how, from that on, Sloppy punished the lag, put him at disadvantage, and just took that disadvantage state all the way to the win. Good play by Sloppy Poppy. And that was a loser. Hobo is out. What what place is Hobo out in? Loser round four. Oh, not bad. Not bad. We go to losers round what? Round five is the last. last Maybe winner. Bad. I quite enjoyed calling that match though. That was a that was a match where you could see like players adjust in real time and then readjust. I really liked it. I really liked it. Uh oh. <laughs> Next we have the D versus the Aku. He versus who? Aku. Aku Akumarama. Okay. Not, not, not to be confused with the Samurai Jack villain, no. So Aku has usually either been going Mario or We Fit Trainer. I don't think we're gonna see these uh, Ganondorf, but I hope we're gonna see these Ganondorf. I think, I think maybe like, a Greninja versus Maybe. Mario He's matchup? What do you think? It. Because like, think about it. We Fit Trainer wants to camp. Greninja, zone breaks. Where's Mario? Man, Mario. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a call right now, Greninja. Greninja versus who? Probably Mario. 
I think so too. Greninja versus Mario. So two rush down character, two no, fast. No, Mario two isn't a characters. rush down. Greninja's a rush down. Mario's more like a, a probably a bait and punish because Mario's he doesn't have that burst option like Greninja does. Whereas Mario has such good and quick punch options for punish. Like his up smash, you can't punish that shit. Like you shield that, oh, okay. Now you, he's free again to up smash again. That's and why true. not throw another up smash? <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been hit by a Kumara up smash. Oh shit! Oh, we might be getting someone new! Here. We're getting Terry Amateur Hour here! Because everybody plays Terry, because why not? Terry Amateur Hour! Yeah! Wait, is this actually a serious game? I don't believe this. Holy shit! This is a serious game! Yeah! Uh... Uh... I've never actually seen this matchup in my life. So... I am just not gonna bullshit and say absolutely nothing. What do you think about this <laughs> matchup, Shota? Have you seen this matchup before? Uh, I think uh, Akumara is gonna win, just getting in there, yeah? tapping them. I don't know, getting because like, combo sure. happens. Yep, there we go, just like that. The whole point of like, Terry is to like, get your easy, easy bake 30% combos, right? But like, it, Mars can space well, which D is not spacing well, but like, if Mars can space well, then like, fuck. Terry. Oh my god, no! Oh, the tech and the disrespect! Put some respect on his name! Disrespect just happened. Oh man, so. Yeah. But this is, like, Terry should have no problem killing. Yeah, down B, he's dead. Yeah, Done! Yeah, I thought so. I caught it. But like, this neutral is where it separates the men from the boys. Because, like, Marth is supposed to have a better neutral. Except D's not playing Marth. <laughs> and these two characters are <laughs> the, just so different. One is just want to get in there and one is just want to spacing out. Yeah, that's right. Except D's trying to get in there too. That's why right, he's throwing, like, unsafe dash attacks and stuff. He should be throwing out, like, safe forward airs or, like, neutral airs on Terry's shield. Because what's Terry gonna do? Try to dab himself out of it? But whenever uh, Marth goes in, like, he gets punished so hard by jab, jab, like, <laughs> jab, jab, down B, 30% easy bake, come again. Right, more, I, that's what I want to see from D, if he wants to play this matchup correctly. More, uh, more, more forward air, more yes. back, no down air, because if you, if you miss space that down air, that's when you're in Terry's range. Like Terry's short little T-Rex arms, they're tiny, but they're going to take you from like 0 to 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by like pressing like two buttons. And that's it. Yeah, look at Just like that. See, whenever, whenever D gets close, it's like instant death. And he's, he's trying to like YOLO tipper forward smash, which uh, it might kill. I'm not sure. From middle of Pokemon Stadium 80. Oh, he's trying those ready combo. Yeah, yeah. Now one into side, me into. F smash. Like I would. Oh, oh really nice power, guys. And a double one. Third one. What is going on here? What's going on? Oh, oh. wow. The spacer is getting out space. Please. Control. Pause. LR oh, Star Fox. Come on. LR Star Ganondorf. In a, I think that match answered the question of like, if you have short arms and a long ass sword, who would win? Because the short arms just won there. <laughs> Man, who needs who needs sword anyways? The medieval ages were overrated. Let's get into fist fights. All right, this is where these like, I'm gonna. My frame data is probably just as good as your frame data, but I'm gonna bait and punish you. Because like, for a single mistake that Greninja makes, Terry is gonna easy bait combo him. <laughs> just like that, 15 seconds into yep. the game, 64%. But, oh, oh, but this is where- Akurama answer right back. No, this is where Greninja, like right now, 
Z is just going so hard in for Greninja, playing so aggressively. And Greninja is meant to be played as a bait and punish character. I mean, his frame data is good, but his bait punishing is the be one of the best in the game, in my opinion. And when he goes in hard like that, I gets forward smash to the face. Why play Greninja? Might as well just play Pichu, who has a better rushdown. Oh, he's not gonna kill you. Oh, oh that kill! Nice cat push it up there. Yeah. So that's that's one of the things where people are saying like Terry is better than Ryu. Yes, he is. <laughs> but like Ryu can like get down with focus attack and do other things to make up his landing. Terry can like die. No, oh, but you can fall focus attack against Ready oh, Jabia though. True, but you can focus attack and then air dash. That's the one where you have you can mix it up. Do you air dash back? Do you air dash forward? Or do you hold the forward attack? So that's how Ryu can mix it up. Oh, and uh, well, it's just quite. Greninja the was just putting up too much ledge pressure. There was just like shurikens everywhere, and Terra's like, no, I'm, I'm out of here. Gotta get me some of that. I'm a good boy and girl. Oh, Aku got greedy because right there, like, he should have just down B for the guarantee percent. If he was over 100, that would have grabbed, but he wasn't. So this is where like Aku is starting to be like praying a little too aggressively, trying to catch up to um, trying to try to make up the difference. And that's where you can play around as Greninja. You can you can see that he's playing like um, very aggressive, and then just keep baiting him with your movement. And by baiting him, I don't mean dash attack into a shield because that's how you get easy for thirty percent. Oh, what's oh, that was that was actually punish. smart. So you see what Aku did there. Like, Aku knew D was gonna punish his landing. So he dare dodge to the ground for safe landing. That's actually brilliant. Oh, really ballsy coming out from Aku. It's not gonna pay off. Terry was not a good enough boy. But to be fair, to be fair, Terry did SD in a match, right? And he still brought it back really close. So now Brandon has a really hard, I mean Aku, has a really hard option in front of him. Does he want to stay Terry? He was doing pretty well. And he only lost because the SD. Or does he want to go somewhere else on his final stop? This is a really hard option and I wouldn't know what to do. What would you do? I'm, I'm gonna call Comfort Pete right now, Mario's. Mario? Yep. True. Well, let's see. I would, if, I would probably go to my own comfort pick as well, if my tournament was on the line. Oh, he picked Final Destination. This is it. This is loser bracket. And he's sticking with the Terry. To be fair, I wouldn't blame him for sticking with Terry, because he was doing really well. He only lost because of the SD on the second stop. Alright. Yeah. See, so this is this is like a battle of the projectiles, except Greninja's projectile is better. So Greninja gets to dictate the map, the pace of this game. <laughs> like Terry, Terry's projectile is fire or something, and Greninja's puny water shuriken is gonna just take that out. Oh, oh. really going ballsy for yeah. the down? I down that's, that's way too ballsy for me, man. Like, Terra's recovery is not that good. Like, and if he gets caught by the water box of Greninja's up B, that's a free stop. I would not go off to try to edge guard Greninja as Terry. Maybe like edge trapping? Sure, but definitely not edge guarding. Sometimes but you need to go ballsy. No. That's your permanent off guard. Kill. No. Yep, this oh, is yeah. one more power down. It's gonna do it. But what is D looking for right now? Yep, no. that's it. Good fight. Like, there was a point there when D could have caught Aku's landing, but D didn't. I think D was is looking for like a down tilt to an up smash there. He's looking for the kill. So that's why he didn't go for that easy punish. He wanted like the harder punish. And that's why he got no punish at all. Yeah, see, he, I think he's going for it. Yep, he's looking for it. And because he was looking for it, he, he, got, he lost the stock. 
and he took 67%. That's why, like, you just kind of let it have to let things come as Greninja. You can't really force things or even look for a down tilt because you're going to pay so hard. Oh, here we go, another shenanigans. No, that wasn't shenanigans at all. It was a brilliant move. Aku knew that D is looking to take uh, cover the landing, which is why he got... Oh! oh! <laughs> That's why he, he uh, what's it called, stalled a little with the power wave. Brilliant, brilliant move by Aku. Yeah, you see that? D might have taken a stock from the down tilt, but now he's just being put in disadvantage over and over again because of it. Because of, instead of like, trying to go for an easy dash attack when Aku was at 88, he wanted to go for a down tilt. And now he's just paying for it from then. Like, that's, like one move can lead to just so, so much disadvantage. See? Like, now? Because up tilt wouldn't have killed at that percent, he was hoping to read an air dodge to a forward smash, which would have killed, but it didn't kill, and he took 28 percent for it. Like, no. he's he's getting really frustrated at this point. Like, if I were him, I would probably just like calm down, because you're you're losing stocks like this. Don't panic. Just keep baiting. Keep trying to play Greninja the way he's supposed to be played. Don't just play Greninja so aggressively because. Terry's just, that's how it is, we're playing into Terry's hands. Man, Aku just kept asking him if he's okay. And it just kicked him right in the face. And he was not okay. He, he was, was like, okay uh, what's that one Michael Jackson song like? Hey, Annie, are you okay? And D was like, was no, not I'm okay. not okay. <laughs> Aku went smooth criminal on him all over his face. Camus Andrew? Uh, I like it when brackets go as they're supposed to and there's no major upsets because now we get treated to Camus and Andrew, the number one and two seeds in winner's final. God is in his heavens, all is right with the world. <laughs> All right, so this is the matchup I've been waiting for. That's right, I've been waiting for this too. And you at home should be fading for this as well, because you're about to see some of the highest level Smash Vietnam scene has got to offer. This is a matchup we've seen time and time and time again, but... Cam no, always not always, not always, because back then Andrew played Pichu, and now <laughs> he's not going to play Pichu. So now it's Battle of the Waifus! Actually, what? Yeah! Oh, and he's gonna go with the Pichu. The classic. Alright, never mind. No Battle of Waifu. Teardrop. But, Battle of the Waifu versus a rat. I don't know. I love underdogs, but I also love waifus. Who should I cheer for? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Would you cheer for underdog or waifus? Uh, I would cheer for underdogs. Underdog? Alright. I'll cheer for waifu! Nope, oh, and just like that, 83%. Waifu, oh my god! Uh, smash, man. That was like... 18 active friends. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. No, she was like, calling out help from the heaven, like, wherever you go, light will find you, light finds a way. Oh man, you see that? Andrew's jumping a lot, so Camus is just throwing out neutral airs in anticipation to catch Andrew's jump. Oh, and, and just like that yeah. again, you've seen that up smash. Because Andrew's afraid of going to the ledge, that's why he's trying to up B across Camus. But damn, that ray of light still catches it too, because why not? Why not program a move that hits the entire screen? What's wrong with that? That's fair and balanced. That's right. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, the last why not, the why not program a move that lasts forever too and kills? That's fair and balanced. <laughs> so, you see that? Oh! Ole, 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 ole! Three stock! Three stock!
Ole, 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 ole. It's a tradition. When you get three stocks or two stocks here. back in Smash Four days, it's called the Ole. <laughs> All right, and I don't think he's gonna go with really Pichu hard. anymore. Yeah, yeah I, I thought he's so. Sticking with the this is this is what I thought the original matchup was gonna be. Waifu v Waifu. May the best Waifu win. Zelda. Zelda's such a cutie pie, especially her new design. Don't you think? You gotta stop commenting 17 years old like that. I am 17 years old. Anyways. Uh-huh. Yeah, like, Andrew's really having trouble setting up. Because oh, as soon as Kama nice. sees Andrew setting up that uh, that knight, he auto reticles. And if you hit Zelda mid-setting up, her knight just falls apart. So that's pretty smart. Like, hmm. I think Palutena would control the pace of this game. What do you think? Can Andrew have a chance here? No, like that's why this. Andrew's like bot dodging right now. He's hoping for like a dash attack or something, which I don't think Camus is gonna give him. So it's then hoping to punish it with an up B. But I think Camus is way too smart for that. Yeah, he's like trying to read roll ins or something and just YOLO because in neutral, like Palutena just has better tools. Honestly, like her neutral is bigger, her back air is invincible, her forwarder has more range. Oh, so close. Yeah. Because there wasn't many things Andrew could have done there if you see that ledge trap. Like Camus put the explosive flame right in the way, and if he would have tried to um, up B back to the platform, then Camus would have punished it himself. So there wasn't many things to do unless Cam Andrew got the angle just perfect. Yeah, like Camus is already reading his upbeat because he knows like that's the only way Andrew's gonna punish him. So like now Andrew has to like pray for like a dash attack or something, like a whiff dash attack. But Camus isn't gonna give it to him because Camus is just gonna space safe back airs that are unpunishable. Mark my words. Yep, like back air, neutral air. There won't be too many uh, dash attacks or like oh, um, grabs unless Camus is sure he's gonna get something out of it. Yeah. Oh, really nice there. catch. But he Camus is still one stop ahead. That's right. And now he's gonna get combo to 40. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. So right, like, what does Zelda do in this matchup? I'm trying to think, and I don't really have an answer because Palutena has better frame data. Palutena just has better moves that are invincible. Like, if you get close, then you're risking so much against Palutena. And when you're far away, Explosive Flame and Auto Reticle beats Knight and Din's Fire. So at what range is Zelda supposed to play at? And I don't know. What, what do you think? Right, you can talk about you can't talk about frame that like, character right without now, talking about the players. That's how you know Andrew's desperate. Like he he was trying to like go for a YOLO re, like a YOLO back roll read at 30, and it probably wouldn't have killed unless Camus like di terribly wrong. And even then, I don't think it would have killed. So like, what does Zelda do in this matchup? What range are you supposed to play at when all of Palutena's options? Just seems so much better. What do you think? What would you do, Shoda? I knowledge would bomb us. Drop and a knowledge home, bomb. To be honest, huh? I would go home. You would go home. You would LR Star Fox. I would LR Star Fox Joker. <laughs> like, okay. So if you notice, Andrew's trying to do some like neutral B, like Nehru's love, because that kind of gives have been success. Right? But that does nothing! It just gives him percentage. And whereas, like, when Palutena hits with something, she just combos and takes it so far into disadvantage. Whereas when Daru's love hits, oh well, reset neutral, rinse repeat. Oh! Teleporting in place. Yeah. He was hoping maybe that would have reached. No, I don't think so. I think it was a recovery mix up. Up air. Nope. Oh, yep, that's right. He read it. Oh, 
I see. A nice teleport coming up on Andrew. I see, I Finally, see. Finally, the first time ever he's had a lead. Just a tiny lead, but there it is. Respect! Really nice stuff coming All up from right. Andrew. Now he's two stock ahead. So that's Andrew's answering my question. He's saying that's how you should play Zelda. You have to bait things out and then hard punish them. Fair enough, because I think Zelda loses his every range. So all he can do is just try to bait and hope Camus falls for a bait. Fair enough. Like if you remember that interaction, he pulled out the knight, which Camus then auto reticled, but because they were so far away, then Camus, uh, then Andrew teleported. But now, after immediately after the auto reticle or the explosive flame, Camus is holding shield now. So now Camus expects like the instant punish that is coming. Oh, oh man, really that was nice, close. really smart. <laughs> Respect that he's going for it. Yeah. Trying to use the like, wind box to push Andrew just a little I, bit outside of it. My, my butthole clenched right there. <laughs> like, Jesus. Right? And even now, Camus knows that Andrew's looking for the uh, Nehru's love, which is why he's just neutral there. He's coming on top. Which beats the Nerio's Love hitbox, which only covers around you to, to the side. And in the air, there's okay. not he's much Zelda can do oh, he's to be. Not kill yet. Yeah, there's not much Zelda can do to beat Palutena because her neutral air and back air is just so. Yeah, exactly. That neutral air is so oppressive. What is Zelda gonna do? Like maybe Zelda can like try to anti aerial with like an up air or an up smash. But like those just take so long that you have to be like basically predicting these moves. And if you predict wrong and you misspace it, then you get punished by Palutena. Oh! Oh, oh it's not oh, yet. Oh shit! Yet. No! Don't let go of the controller yet. Oh, and that's gonna be it. Really nice stuff coming out from Andrew. Andrew saying, Respect. you know what? It's a bad matchup, but I can still punish you. I'm still gonna go for the YOLO reads. But it's still so hard though. If he doesn't get a second stop, he probably wouldn't win this match. Yeah, exactly. Kim's. Even though Camus is one stop ahead, uh, one stop behind, he's still pulling up really close. I think it was 70%. Yeah. I think it's just a losing matchup for Zelda. So Zelda's forced to do like really risky reads. When it pays off, it works, but usually it doesn't really pay off. And sometimes it still feels so good. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, there's a shrink. 42%. Yep. Easy 40%. Like Easy 40%. Right? So, like, what does Zelda do in neutral? Andrew's trying to mix it up by doing aerial Nehru's love, but that's so laggy. Like, Nehru's love in general is just so laggy. Unless you read that person's gonna attack you in some way. And Camus isn't really committing so hard, or he's committing with like pretty safe moves, like a back air or forward air safely space. Yeah. Like, I would prob probably not doing be doing Nero's love much now. It's just not working. It's just not working. Camus is punishing with aerial game. Oh man, did you see that? That back air beats out Nero's left. That's insane. Oh, uh, yeah. What do you do? What do you do except YOLO? Like, I wouldn't even YOLO right now if I were Andrew because 44 is not gonna kill at the ledge. And when he YOLOs up, uh, up B like that, he just gets punished. So when you look at things like a risk-reward kind of ratio, his risk is so high, and his reward is he gets percent. So what? I would I would not do up Bs unless like Kalutena was like more than like 80 percent. Yeah, the Nehru's love. How is, is just keep it going? Right. Because, because like the frame data on Nehru's love is just 
so slow. Unless, and like when Camus attacks too, for example, like a back air or a forward, that's also invincible. So like, what's that gonna do for Nereus Love? They're just gonna clank, you're gonna get nothing. So why even throw a Nereus Love when you're getting punished so hard by it? Yeah. Honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't know how I would approach this matchup. There's just, like, there's just so many things in Palutena's favor. Actually, I probably would approach it just like how Andrew is approaching it right now. Just YOLO and neutral. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Oh, really nice platform cancer coming yeah. out from Camus. See, like, Andrew's, you, normally, when Andrew ledge traps, like, Andrew would ledge trap with knife oh. or some other combination. But right now, like, Andrew's probably so tilted that he's, like, not ledge trapping with knight at all. Yep. So, Andrew was so tilted that he went off his usual ledge trapping routine. And... That's also like contributed to what like I think he would have lost anyways even if he wasn't tilted, but like that just sped up the process, if that makes sense. Andrew was just trying to like ledge trap with Zelda. <laughs> like what's Zelda gonna do? Normally he would throw up night, he would do other things, he would straight up traps here and there, but the final stock versus Camus, even when Le Andrew had the opportunity to ledge trap, he just stood at the ledge, just like, yeah, uh, right, whatever. Right, like we have some, no nice, some downtime, I'm gonna... Hmm? What's up? I need to go. Oh, you need to go? You need to leave? No. Oh, you, oh to the toilet, that's right. Man. Like, so as purely like an intellectual exercise, I would still want to try to figure out the Zelda versus Palutena matchup as Zelda. But like, what kind of tools does Zelda have? If she reads like a neutral air, maybe she can forward air or something. Yeah, I, I don't think um, Ariel Nehru's love like Andrew would have tried would have worked. Hmm. So as Palutena is throwing out neutral air, she's trying to get the read. You can punish that with the forward air, and that's not too risky. It'll probably actually, yeah, I think it would outrange the neutral air. So that could work for the aerial approaches. Whereas like. For the ground approaches though, what would Zelda do? Because then like, like a dash attack, right? That would probably clank with the, with the Nehru's love. So hey, you lose nothing except now Palutena is closer and better to take advantage of frame data, right? So, hmm. So, yeah, Andrew has always Cause on the ground, like Andrew always has to be on the back foot. He can like try to spot dodge, but then if Camus baits out the spot dodge, well, hard punish, like a back air punish or like a grab punish, right? So what can Zelda do? And then like Knight, uh, auto Reiko, explosive flame. I think that just beats the shit out of Knight. Everything about Palutena is just so good. No. I wouldn't say everything about, like, Palutena has her weaknesses, um, but I don't think Zelda is equipped to take care of those weaknesses, because Zelda, on the ground, is always going to be on the back foot, that I think anyways. Next, we have Danny versus Paco. Paco, Apton, Apton, Apton. What? Ow! No. 
So Paco is going to be playing her wolf. Danny Incineroar? Probably. Oh, we could see him pulling out the Joker here. I... I don't know. He has Joker as I a think, secondary. He I think the Wolf out, he versus Incineroar, Incineroar matchup isn't that bad for Incineroar. You can fight me. We seen Big three. We seen three O last week on Paco and Jeez and uh, Danny. This is because Paco is a better player. But like, Wolf has single hit strong attack. Incineroar has a counter to deal with single hit strong attack. So we'll see. We'll see. Let's see where they go. Yep, so Paco's saying I'm trying to cam. I don't... So why does Danny shield that instead of trying to like absorb that and get like the little rage meter? Because he can probably absorb that, right? Yep. Sure can. Nice. Fishing for those up smash. Yep. Oh. Danny is trying to read that wolf flash back to the stage for the revenge. Yeah. And that forward tilt so strong. Because Paco is trying to get back on stage too aggressively. She's becoming impatient. Like when you land back on stage, you're always at disadvantage. So by doing that, she opened herself for that attack. And that's why she lost the stock. Like, if I were Paco, I would probably try to go to ledge. Because then she's more safe. There you go. Slowly play back to neutral. Instead of like rushing towards Who neutral right away. See? And that's what happens when Danny tries to go back to stage right away. He gets punished. Just always go to ledge. Be patient. It's not usually like the most flashy move. But it's the safest move. And you don't want to get punished. Ah, oh, Incineroar's out of shield is so good with that neutral air. Oh, here we go. Oh, that was a risky move by Paco. Throwing out that laser, like, it worked and it was great, but if it didn't work, she would have been punished. There you go, see? Now everyone, oh, if you notice, the now Danny and Paco are recovering to the ledge and they're much safer because of it. Now they're not getting punished. How does Paco kill now? Maybe with a back air or a down smash? Or no, maybe or a back throw. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, oh. and the dash attack on the take it. I think the dash attack only killed because Danny DI'd that badly. Like, if he DI'd it in, I don't think that would have killed. Yeah. Ooh. Like, Paco... And Danny had been so good with these right. Saibis. Paco is throwing out too many moves. She's committing way too much, trying to read like a roll in or a roll out, and just throwing out YOLO on safe moves. And that's where the command grab comes in. Like, you're gonna see that a lot with Paco. Like, when she's in advantage or something, she just throws out moves trying to predict you and that's how you get punished. Like that! Like she was trying to predict when she didn't need to predict. She could have just reacted and done better. But now she's in disadvantage because she tried to go for a YOLO move and Danny just got like 30-40% off that and he's continuing to push the disadvantage state. Now they're back in neutral. That's right. Just. When, when like you're disadvantaged, you should just slowly oh, really go nice back to neutral, don't try to risk it, you're just gonna get punished worse, you know, you don't have to be flashy. Oh, no punish. No? The punish came out a little late on that, and the forward air is yeah, gonna take. Yeah, nothing much to do. There's nothing much you could have done there.
So Danny actually played that brilliantly. That's why I said, like, I'm not sure if Incineroar v Wolf is a bad matchup for Incineroar. Like, I can see it maybe a win for Wolf, or pretty even. Because, like, they both kind of want to be close, right? And, like, if Wolf tries to deal, like, throw out lasers too much, Incineroar can hard punish that or maybe absorb it. So, this is a pretty cool matchup. I'm, I'm really having fun so far analyzing this. But what the smokes? The Greninja's coming and out! Greninja. Praise the frog! Praise the frog! Wait, King DDD! Come summon the penguin! What is it, day two, Greninja? Alright. Yeah? So. Oh, now it's just okay, gonna stick with her comfort pick. The wolf I would here. stick with the counter She's pick. Not too, gonna because pull out. Oh, wait. Oh, wait! Good thing, day day day. Okay. Oh, yeah, here we go. So. Day two, Greninja. If you play Greninja like a bait and punish character, this is definitely a waiting matchup for Greninja. Oh, but wait. But how, how, like, I've never seen Meryl's Greninja, so, like, it could be the most aggressive as fuck Greninja. And who knows? Oh, and I remember. Uh, Paco talking the Discord saying Greninja is a really fun rushdown character. Uh, so this is gonna they, be a rushdown so playstyle here. Actually, <laughs> most I think most people who oh, don't sure. know Greninja think Greninja is a rushdown character, but Greninja is actually not a rushdown character. Greninja would be a, like a bait and punish character in my opinion because the movement is so good and the punishment is so hard. Huh, she's actually doing pretty well so far. No, not really. Like, sure, she's winning in percent, but like, Incineroar can kill easily. With Greninja, like, oh, okay, fair enough, fair yeah. enough. I think, oh, and the T-Bag coming out. <laughs> I think that was just like, matchup. I think that was match lack of matchup knowledge on Danny's part. Because once you play Greninja enough, like, you're gonna see that Shadow Sneak coming from miles away. Like, nobody gets hit by that. <laughs> Unless he disguises it somewhere like like Battle Final Final Destination where it's really black. This is why she pulled out that day two Greninja on her last day. Yeah, see like Then he's gonna be able, able like, to adapt that next week. Right now Greninja's not doing so hot. Like I would say uh, Incineroar is winning at this moment just because he can kill much easily. If not even right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's random counter. Yeah. Like so a lot of people think that Greninja has to attack, has to attack, has to attack, no. Greninja has to be played as a bait and punish character. Like, if you watch Leah, or maybe uh, I Studying, or someone like that, they don't really play Greninja as an aggressive character like someone will play Pichu. You would play Greninja as a bait and punish. He has all the kit to bait and punish. And Danny Yola. Danny's playing, is playing it very, really very patiently smart. right now. Very, very smart. Yeah, see? Really nice. That's why that's why as I said, like when when you when at the beginning they were tied, I thought Incineroar was winning the matchup. I don't think they were tied at all. So that's the problem with Greninja, because to true combo as the Greninja, you have to be so frame perfect. There's like a three frame link for that. And because Meryl's not a Greninja main, she doesn't have like those links down. Those links need to be like muscle memory. And that's why she's whipping like the dash attack to the forward air. Yeah, like if, if you can't have those links down, like the only way Greninja is gonna kill is gonna be either YOLO sneak attack or YOLO like down smash, which doesn't make Greninja a very good character. Like what makes Greninja so good is his ability to combo, true combo. And if you can't true combo, then like there goes Greninja's game. Yeah. Yeah, like, if she, 
She's gonna get a kill with either a Shadow Snake or a Yolo Smash. But Incineroar can kill with like safe things, right? Yep. So that's why I don't. I All still right. think Greninja versus Incineroar is a winning matchup for Greninja if you play as a bait and punish character. But if you play like an aggressive Greninja and just run into like neutral airs, I don't think it's a winning matchup for Greninja at all. What's next? Oh shit! Danny made it to losers finals with the Incineroar! Hi! Alright, get your Magisters out because we also have an Incineroar in Vietnam! Incineroar boys, rise up! Nobody risen up. They have risen up. They are already very risen up. They can't be more risen up. There is no Incineroar means. Huh? There's an Incineroar main. His name is Danny Yola. Put some respect. Put some respect on his name. All right. I still enjoyed Paco's uh, Greninja. Yeah? I think if she were to play Greninja more, she should try to bait and punish more as a Greninja instead of just jumping in and getting neutral air. Alright. I think this is a losing matchup for, uh, for Instant Aurora. What do you think? In fact, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like. So Incineroar can't get in, like he's so slow, he's like the slowest character in the game. The Zelda can just build up her wall for free. And by wall, I mean like the Knight, I mean the Inspire, like good luck getting in Incineroar. <laughs> <And then, laughs> except, except when Zelda just the Inspire next to you, then you go in deep. Just gotta stick. Like, yeah, really closely like, to Zelda. All right. There's there's the knight, now there's the dense fire. Oh. What do you do? What do you do? You air dodge? Yeah, revenge. And then you revenge. air dodge, but El Zelda's gonna cover it. She's gonna jump out there and just hit you again. So what do you do? Counter it. Exactly. LR start box. Our LR start joker. <laughs> really smart recovery from Andrew. Yep. Mixing up his recovery positions. So if you notice. Like, Andrew's trying to play like an aggressive Zelda, which is normally not how you play Zelda, which is why he's getting punished. And now he's going back to like the campy Zelda, which is, I think, how you're supposed to play this matchup. But maybe Andrew's just like, fuck it, let's play Zelda the way I want to play Zelda matchup be damn. Sorry, rush down is always more fun than camping. I think oh, Andrew sure. was going for an up B there. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't even kill. Like, and he scaled it. So, mm, I'm not sure if that was the best move. Like, I probably would have grabbed or something and thrown off to just keep my advantage stage going. I just oh, pressed my advantage. Oh. Yeah, dude. Like, I probably would have just kept my advantage stage up. Yeah. See, Andrew's like trying to play like aggro Zelda. <laughs> and that's why, <laughs> that's why like Incineroar's got back up because they're just like YOLO fuck it I can be little Mac too just like that it's even Oh. That was a pretty sweet lead trap Andrew had. Oh no, hard punish! Oh! Alright, do, do, do you think he would have learned his lesson? Or is he still like, no. I'm, I'm Little Mac in, <laughs> uh, rush in Zelda's body? He, he's still matter. rushed out. Yep. He's all aggro, all of, he, he, he's doing it! No more he's night, he's just like, fuck it, all aggro all the time, baby! 24-7! Get my frame data up in here! 
Oh, Screw man. camping, man. He, he's just like, this I don't care about the matchup. I'm just a better player. I'm just gonna read you. Oh, oh never mind. He, he broke it. He, he's, he's camping him now. Oh, oh, he got scared at last minute because of the DI, but fair enough. Nothing wrong with taking a step back. Take a breather. Yeah, so Danny should not be ledge guarding so close to the ledge because Andrew can just hold down, go at, past the ledge and just hit him for free. And that's a mix up. So like, man, oh man, Andrew, like if Andrew wasn't scared, that was like a KO. But one more right throw is gonna kill. Dead. Yep. But the command grab read coming out from Andrew, really nice. Well, to be fair, I'm not sure if it was a read because that was the first, the first command grab Danny ever threw. I think that was just like months of playing Zelda and spot dodging to up B. I don't think that was a read, and Andrew's confirming that was not a read because with reads, like usually you would like see. Like, he would have thrown it out before. Alright. This is... Hmm. So... At, maybe Danny's like, doing the same philosophy, like... You know, I want to go to your best stage. Show me what you got! Like... <laughs> You know, I was like, come on! Like, he's like, Fox, he's like, come on! Come at me! <laughs> because, like, this is like Zelda's better stage. Like, Zelda's just gonna camp him to hell with Knight. Except Andrew's, like, refusing to use Knight, which is, you know, fair play to him. There's a Knight. <laughs> like, you know, and, like, Danny Yolo's, like, embracing his inner Captain Falcon. He's like, come on! Show me your move! <laughs> and there was that move straight to his face but <laughs> so that, that's like the only reason why you would go here because like oh man i i would oh, i would really nice game from I andrew would, i would takes not it. take he takes uh, it. zelda here as an incineroar nor would i take uh Kalutena here as an incineroar but man if you're gonna be manly about it you might as well just go balls to the walls manly <laughs> like what is your best stage let's go there Oh, that's that's dangerous. I think, yeah. Yep, that's be like, it. Don't don't pass don't take him to the game. stage, please. If, but please, if it hasn't worked, you've gotten destroyed on every one of these stages. <laughs> but I respect Danny Yola's bravery. But I think he's gonna get destroyed again. Oh no! Now he's he's not going to Yoshi's. This is a better stage for Incineroar, I think. Yep. <laughs> oh, he's pulling out the Joker. The Joker. You know he's pulling out the Joker when he's losing. Wait, let's. I want to see how Danny plays this Joker. Is he gonna space with bears? Is he gonna projectile camp? There's so many cool ways to play Joker, which is what makes him such a good top tier because every Joker can like do something different. Mm. All right. So Danny is playing an aggro joker. And what I mean by that is like he's trying to go in with dash attacks like that and trying to like just out uh, frame dead out Zelda. Which is exactly what Andrew wants. Because like Andrew can just spot dodge one of those dash attacks instead of. So like if I were Danny, I would try to like mix up the way he plays Joker more. Um, instead of like dash attacking or projectiles, maybe throw out like safely spaced back air, something like that. Oh, and a sweet spot forward air. Yeah. That's it. Ascent's gone. See, like you see, he's so aggressive. And that's how you get 36% and Jim because he was too aggressive. And that's what I mean. Because his style of Joker is so aggressive, that's the style Andrew Zelda counters. So he can't be playing aggressive Joker unless he wants to get zero to death again. 
like he should be playing either spacing kind of Joker or something else because I would not rush head first into Zelda. Yeah, maybe like down tilt to like, you know, go across Zelda's shield. So if he misses, he doesn't get punished by the up B. Either that or safely, exactly, like safely space back airs and neutral airs. Like, sure, Zelda can try to YOLO punish that with like forward air or back air out of shield, but that's a really hard move to land. And if she misses, hard punish, right? So the risk reward is in your favor. This is some. Um, oh, oh, and that's what? just gonna be what it. What happened there? He lost his jump. He lost his jump, but I think he could have DI'd back. Like, Joker's tether is ridiculous, man. Like, that's right. It will. <laughs> 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 it's like Scorpion's like, get over here, like, you're across the stage, get over here. Fortunately, he doesn't, he doesn't, doesn't go so forward. So if I were Andrew, like, I would probably not use the Zelda because I don't see any way for Zelda to win that match. Alright, here wanna, we go again. Yeah, I want to see how Andrew has adapted against this Kalutena. I don't know, it's it's quite a puzzle, but I don't think Zelda will ever be the answer, unfortunately. No. Alright. So as those two are paying their bills, we go back to our awesome commentators for the day. This is TK. I'm this joined by my co-caster. Shut up. And, and it's, uh, been, if, it's been really fun, hasn't it? We've seen some awesome Smash tonight. That's right. We're going to see it one more time here. Uh, we do have time for, if you're new to the scenes, be sure to follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter. And let's and go. YouTube. Okay, here Let's we go. Let's start the game. All right. So Andrew's going with Zelda. I want to see how he's adapted. I want to see what he sees that I don't. Yeah. Din's our Rariu's love is going to be punished by an aerial. And Zelda can maybe throw out YOLO forward airs in neutral and hope Palutena runs into it, but then what? I believe. Yeah, do you? What do you think Andrew can do? Cause I, no, I just I don't believe I it. don't know what to counter. <laughs> yeah? So you just blindly believe? Yep. I mean, that's what most religions are, so I can't blame you. <laughs> it's an, oh, oh! Just man. like that? Just like so, that? What did Andrew do there to... Uh, no, no. What did Andrew do there to win neutral? Because I'm curious. Oh, really nice parry into jab, rapid jab. Yeah, but you can't... Parrying is one of those things that like you can't really rely on because it's so inconsistent. Like, I give props to Andrew, mad props for winning, uh, for taking that first stock first. But I don't know how he did it. He's trying to do the same oh. bait and punish trick again. And Camus probably know it. Yep. Spacing out just a little bit further away. Yeah, like, dude, even when you Nerius love the auto reticle, it just goes above Palutena's head. How unfair is that? And you can't even, like, reflect the, um, what's it, the explosive flame. So what do you do when you can't reflect it? You're just gonna stay in shield and take it. Oh, I see. Uh, what, what, uh, Andrew's doing, he's trying to two-frame Camus' recovery. Like, Palutena's recovery, I would say, is her weak point because there's always like a set amount of time. And if you're good at 
thinking about what that set amount of time is and adjusting your uh, spacing and timing to that, you can two frame Pelotena pretty easily even. Oh, and he just tried to up the Q no, no. early. Like, he got punished for it. Sure, he's losing, but he's doing so well right now because he's keeping it even. And Palutena, like, he, he's got, he has, he has an easier time killing and punishing. Just the fact that he's keeping it even in neutral means he, means he's really adjusted. Okay, I think I'm starting to see how he is adjusted. So he's moving around more. He's committing less. He's trying to bait Palutena into something, which is great because Palutena is like the one who's dictating. And if Andrew's spacing around, yeah, like the, exactly like that. He's baiting out Palutena's forward air or back air, and then just punishing it. So letting Camus dictate the pace of the match, which is what he's Camus is going to do naturally, anyways. But spacing around, dictating Camus's dictation. See that? He's baiting out the grabs. He's baiting out the missed airs. But man, maybe it'll work this game, but I don't think it's gonna work for the long term because then Camus is gonna readjust again. He needs something to happen right here, right now before That's that right. percent getting That's higher. Right. Okay. Right. Nice catch! He, no, this is... That's gonna do it. It's not that nice because Andrew's been doing the entire stock. He's been waiting for Camus to throw out something unsafe and then he's been punishing it. And that's great. And that's working this game. But is it gonna work for both sets? That's what I'm afraid of. Because all Camus has to do to like uh, counter that is to run back, throw an explosive... Yep, things like that. Throw explosive flames and then he's just gonna counter Andrew again. And then Andrew has to find another way to counter Camus. Yeah, so Andrew has, at least he's proven me wrong. I didn't know what Zelda was supposed to do. Andrew's like, hold my beer. Here's what Zelda's supposed to do. But like, I don't think it's gonna work for another game, honestly. Like, I think Camus is gonna adjust. I believe in you, Andrew. Yeah. See, like, whenever <laughs> Camus sees that Andrew's trying to space something, trying to like dash dance and bait out something unsafe, Camus jumps back, auto reticles are explosive slings for free, and there's nothing Andrew can do. So I, I think that's how that's gonna Camus is gonna adjust against Andrew trying to bait things out. And I don't, I'm not sure if there's anything Andrew can do for about against that. And that Nair is going to kill. Yeah. I mean, that Nair was fresh. Mm, ouch! Hunt, uh, punish. He just like that, read that. But that micro spacing screwed him up. See? Now, instead of just like giving Andrew free hits and like throwing out random moves, Camus, whenever see Andrew's facing, Camus is going back, just playing it safe, safe auto reticle, safe explosive flame. You gotta approach me. I don't need to do shit. I'm dictating the match. And that's how I think this is Camus is gonna win this matchup. And you can see here, Camus can just chilling out all yeah, the record, exactly. explosive flames. So Camus doesn't have to commit if he doesn't want to. So back when Camus was aggroing, Andrew adjusted to that by making Camus commit, punishing it, but now Camus doesn't need to commit. So what is Andrew going to do? He's going to try to reflect it over Camus' head? That's not going to work. <laughs> Did you see that? What a yellow move! This man is so brave! He doesn't care! Yeah, honestly I wouldn't either. 
This is still doable. Only 60% ahead for Camus. No. No, I believe. Oh, I believe a little less now. <laughs> wow. Way to show loyalty. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. and that win box. Yeah. And then you don't believe at all. You're, you were like a person who grew up in like a Christian household when you were like a kid and you had no idea what to believe. You're like, I believe in God! And then you were like, became a teen, you're like, what is this shit? And then you grew up and you're like, fuck God. <laughs> <laughs> were you in any religion when you were growing up? Uh, so my name is Quang Tue. Yeah. Which is the most fucking like religious Buddhist temple name? <laughs> so you're Buddhist? Uh, sure. Let's go with that. I meditate. I hang out with a lot of cool Buddhists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wouldn't identify myself as a Buddhist though. I would. I would say if I was had to choose, I'd be a Buddhist. What about you? Okay. Uh, I've been atheist all my life. Yeah. When you were born, your parents didn't force you to be like, go to the temple or go to the church or something like that? Not forcing, just asking if, if right, I want to cool. come along. Yeah. Alright, so Andrew just showed town and city, I think. Mm -hmm. um, what is he trying to go for there? He's trying to minimize the platform cancels. But there are three platforms here. Well, they disappear. They're not always there. So when Camus platform cancels, he ha he's not 100% sure, right? He's, he's, he's always a little worried if they're there or not. Because when they're not there, then he gets punished for that. So... I can oh, I see! He's gonna kill easier with the up -E. Why is that? Because I think the ceilings are lower. Oh, that was the crazy in Smash 4, I'm not sure here. But I, I think Andrew thinks he'll have an easier time killing. When, when, he doesn't get punishes, but when he does get punishes, they're hard punishes. See, like that read? So, yep. Oh, yep. So, and this working out wonderfully. Every here. single time, Camus has given Andrew the air dodge because he's afraid of the up air. And last time when Andrew did it, he missed the up B, but this time he's like, no, I got it. Third time's a charm, you're dead. Let's do it two more times and you'll win. So I can I can see that he he's going to the stage just so he can take advantage of the punishes and probably get a stock. He's hoping for that anyhow. Hmm. Be like, what do you do with Zelda? Like you can't reflect her shit because it just goes over her anyways. So like you know like like when you get hit, your knight just dies. So this is how I think Camus has to play the matchup. And that's why I think it's such a bad matchup for Zelda. What do you do when you're not able to bait things? And that, yeah sure, you might get lucky once every few while, but it's not worth it. And Camus is just so fast with the punish. No. But you see that? After the down throw, Andrew went up for the up air because Camus wasn't gonna air dodge it. He's already been punished. So Andrew is like, he's still playing smart. That's how you know he hasn't given up yet. He's oh, oh answer oh. right back with the sweet spot. No, forward that was because Cam like Camus missed the spacing there. That was supposed to be true. No, that was... That was less like an awesome move by Kandrew, Andrew and like a kind of a mess up by Kamen. Oh, and he's standing the lead. Yeah. 56%. This is doable. Oh! Just like that. Beautiful. So he went for the grabs and then went for the prediction. Is he gonna air dodge? Is he not gonna air dodge? And he predicted every single time correctly. <laughs> and that's what got him the win right there. The, the 
uh, the up B punish, that got Chemist to be scared of, of the air dodge because he's going to get punished hard. So because he didn't air dodge, he got up aired, he got back aired, and then he got like up aired again, or forward aired again. For Alright, we're going to see Chemist countering back with a Pokemon Stadium 2 pick. Mm. He's supposed to have higher ceilings? Yeah, higher ceilings at least. See, like... You can't you can't do night versus Kalutena because she'll just hit you with auto reticle, safe auto reticle, and just kill you at night. And even if you reflect the auto reticle, you get nothing. <laughs> so like Zelda almost has to like approach and like <laughs> Like the knight's not gonna reach. She's not gonna reach right there. Oh, trying to go for a hard reach. Um, yeah, what was smash? Like normally, when Andrew ledge traps, he would like set up with a knight, set up with some other thing, but he's too scared, probably because Kalutena has a counter that can counter the knight. So that's why he's going for the hardest read, like a YOLO forward smash. Yeah. Good. Oh! Man! And you can see the adaptation coming out from Andrew. Every time Kam is throwing out that auto reticle, he's just. That's right. Teleporting Andrew's in. Playing, Andrew's playing Zelda more aggressively really smart. though. So now we're gonna go back to the cycle again. Where, you know, because so Chemist will try to play aggressively again because he just has better frame data than Zelda, but then Andrew would try to bait Camus again. <laughs> so it's like, this is a giant circle of life that just keeps going round and round and round. Ah, uh, yeah. Just I think like that he knows. No, Camus, Camus is like adjusted to that now. So this is where Kanju needs to like readjust. Andrew shouldn't be throwing those out anymore. Like Camus is like aware of it. So see, now Andrew's going back to the place where he's like trying to space safe moves and then trying to like bait something out of Camus and then punishing it. But then now Camus is going back to like the long distance stuff, right? So it's just like just adapting one after another after another just like so much adaptation just happening in this game right now which is what makes high level smash like so entertaining camus no andrew needs to stop doing that yeah so like that was working but now camus is adapted so andrew needs to re-adapt <laughs> oh double three grab Meditation coming out from Andrew. Yeah. So like, when Andrew was walking in there, you almost had a feeling that like, he didn't know what options to do. Because all of his options are so slow, or punishable by that. Like, uh, <laughs> explosive lame, or auto reticle. So w what does he do? Right now, at range, he's just so clueless. Because Zelda, as a character, is just too slow. And Camus is spacing around the up B now. He, like, totally expects it. So, Andrew, that, that option is taken away from him. What does he do? So now he has to try to go, like, aggro Zelda or something. But then Camus will just outdo that with better frame data. See? Oh, here comes the punish. Like, Camus knows now. He knows he doesn't have to approach. Like, Zelda has to approach him. Like, there's nothing to lose by just camping Zelda. Like, just wait, just bait, punish, run away, go explosive flame, auto reticle. What's Zelda gonna do? And he's just gonna slowly chip away. Andrew's already 104%, you know, maybe 20 more percent, and then a back throw or a back air. There you go! Back throw or back air, exactly. So, I, I see why... That's a 5, yeah. It's 3-1. Oh, I thought it was 2-1. No, I've been keeping score. Okay. So, I see why Camus chose that stage. Do you see? Because he had more space to go and back up and to do auto reticle and um, explosive flame camping. Right? And that was our finals. Wait, hold on. 
We still have winners interview. Chemist, come here. Damn, sit down, Andrew. Andrew, shut down the screen. Winners interview. All right. So can you can you change it to uh, TK and Camus? There you go. Here's your headset. All right. So let's let's start off. Congratulations from winning the tournament. How do you feel? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. What? Huh? How do you feel for winning the tournament? I feel good. Okay. So that matchup was really interesting because Andrew adapted to you and you adapted to Andrew, but by the end, it seemed like you were just trying to out camp him yeah. because he had no approach options. Is that what you were trying to do? Yeah. So how did, like that game, when Andrew won, what do you think you did wrong? Uh, I approached too much with uh, the Nair and I um, <laughs> he punished my Nair, the, the you know. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I got a punish by that. Uh, okay. So now that you've won, what and this is the final uh, tournament for the season, right? There's no, a new. No. This is the first tournament of season three. Oh, see, so wh how do you think you're gonna do for the rest of season three? I gonna do. Yeah. I don't know. Just continue playing Palutena. Okay. Do you? Who do you think is the biggest threat to you in the team? Maybe Andrew. Andrew? Yeah. Do, do you think Andrew's Zelda or Pichu is more of a threat to you? Zelda, I think. Zelda? Why? <laughs> the first time I have fought in Zelda, so... Okay. So, for, for the upcoming season in the scene, right? You've played against everyone today. Who do you think is a dark horse in the scene that can, like, perhaps go... do make do some major damage in the new season? Uh... Danny, I think. Yeah, what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think. Sick and thin or? Something is good. Fair enough. All right. So now we're about to wrap up this tournament for all the lovely audience and people back home who've been cheering you on the entire time. Do you have anything you want to say to them? <laughs> I don't know. Ah. Uh. I don't know what you think. Okay. All right. No problem. Thank you very much. Let's let's get back to uh, Shoda right here. All right, and that's gonna be a wrap. Wait, 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 wait! It's not a wrap yet because is it? If if you've been impressed by the level of the Smash Bros happening in Vietnam and you wanna join, that's right. Where can you go? Right here. On the screen, you can find the links to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Facebook. Use the Facebook link. That's the best. Yep. <laughs> and through the Facebook, you can join our Discord. That's right. That's where all the conversation are happening. So it's been a pleasure casting today with you, Shoda. Is there anything you want to say to the audience watching from back home and around the world? Uh, thank you for joining us uh, on this lovely tournament. Uh, be sure to join us next Wednesday. This has been TK on commentary. And this is Shoda. Been a pleasure. Logging off.